So the question is, why doesn't he grow up? Why does he still behave as a child? How can we help him get rid of these leftovers from childish behavior? <laughs> Those motherfuckers in their pointy shoes are going at it. <laughs> Here. Every time we it comes it. on, I get so excited. It's like a drum. I'm like, it's, here, here we go. Here we go. It's like a roller coaster. This is live. Now oh. we're talking. People listen it's to on this. The air, man. I looked at. Is this on the air right now? Yeah. Uh, this is on the air. You are live. That's what we're oh, doing. Wow. All right. <laughs> With the world. That's how this works. With literally. Hi, world. No pressure. World. Literally. No people. <laughs> All right. Well, we have 12 subscribers. No, but. I read uh, that like s there were seven hundred hours of of listening time total. Whoa! Yeah. Whoa! Yeah. So Whoa. I mean, seven hundred hours. We've made seven hundred hours worth seven, of material. Well, other people have listened to seven hundred hours of this show. Mm. So. Oh, uh, so that they've listened to the same show for that at amount. least you yeah, know, yeah, but the you. total aggregate amount of like listening right. has over seven hundred hours. Take so. Cool. Cheers to right? that. Yeah, cheers to that. Well done, guys. So we are we have no sponsors because uh, oh, nobody man. really listens, but involuntary I would sponsorship. like to practice slightly. Yeah. And tonight's podcast is brought to you and us by Angels Envy Whiskey. God damn, mm. this shit is delicious. I second can I that. can I can I get a cheers? Oh, cheers to Angels cheers. Envy. To Angels Envy, wow. our sponsor. I got to be honest, this our stuff. Our make believe sponsor. This stuff is it's what fifty bucks. Yep. It it rivals Johnny Walker Blue Label. It's it's just absurdly good for considering how cheap mm. it is. It's like baby tears. It keeps getting better. It's, it just no it, ice. Mm. You really don't need it. It does feel like there's something extra in there. Just to soothe you. It's like a warm pat on the back. It's like, here, oh, you know that normal little bite that you're used to from whiskey? No, I'm just going to, like, rub you in the back yeah, of the head like instead side, of that feeling. Mouth massage. Oh, my massage. God, it feels so good. And we're also brought to you by the Padcaster. Boom. Wow, look at, the, look at this thing. It takes your iPad. Kyle, what is the podcast? Padcaster. Padcaster turns your iPad into a TV studio. Just a regular iPad. You you can use interchangeable DSLR lenses. We can attach a light up here. Although I didn't want to blast Rob right in the face with this right, thing. You can attach it to it. a Good. tripod. Move it wherever you want, and and you have a full display with full control over. Over, over your uh, your field of view, your brightness and darkness. It's fucking awesome. It's yeah. it's a hundred and fifty bucks at pad, pad, padcaster dot com, right? Uh, yeah, uh, it's sponsors. an awesome product. Well, we have, we have awesome one more product. Right. There's one we more have, sponsor. Three sponsors. Oh, right. and there's one more. It's literally the most important one. All right. And this is also brought to you by Bandana, Bandana Training. Training. Yeah, baby. Bandana. Oh. Because yes, we're here better. with Rob Salaver. Yeah. Motherfucking bandit. He's been dodging us. Whoa. Ducking us hard. Whoa. Ducking us hard, folks. Now, guys. A guys, year. Here it is. Now. Full year. Of course. Not it was, dodging. It was really. snobbery, I think, at first. But you know what? I was like, Bro hey, do you want to be on my podcast? And, <laughs> and Rob was like, do you know how many Twitter followers I have? What? Bitch. He and, said and that. I heard I it. Did, you I heard guys him are say lying it. now. I heard you him bring say me it. here and you lie to me. And then lie to me. And then I said. He said, one minute, Arnold's calling. I gotta oh, take this. Gosh. Yeah. So that's how tonight's gonna go. Right. Well, no. I mean, no. I'm, it, nice. what I'm saying is, is like, really nice. either one of two things have this happened. Is delightful, guys. <laughs> either appreciate this. Either we got a whole lot cooler, yeah. or he got a lot less cooler. <laughs> one of the two happened. <laughs> I think there was a merging of the two. Really, yeah, the, the coolness factors. We're we're on the, the up. We're on the up and up. We're trying. And, uh, he's you yeah, know. I'm on the downswing. He's coming down. So yep. Here we go. Should, uh, can't last forever. All right. Thank you for that anyway, lovely introduction. Rob, would you please tell <laughs> yeah, what is the bandana? beautiful people uh, about bandana training and your services and your website and your philosophy? Oh, sure. Maybe um, not the philosophy part, but... Just the services yeah. part. What, yeah. do you, what do you do? This is this is your sales time. 
Yeah. No, I appreciate that. Um, to maybe potentially 700 hours of boom. listening. Yeah, I, I think we're going to surpass 800, I would imagine, at this point, right? It's true. He's got a lot of followers. This is the 18th podcast. Legal. Right? As we this is the 18th. 18, so that yeah. feels good. I feel honored to be a part of And YouTube of it. is like tattoos because yeah. they're forever. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be on the interwebs Unless forever. you remove them. But, yeah, like, we, you know, we're, gonna, we're not going to remove them, so it's forever. Right. Does that, does that, can you just delete things off No, here? I mean, think about this. If the internet lives, yeah. like if it's a thing that just survives, this, this will be ar- like archived mm-hmm. p- potentially for millions of years. Right. Like, like this so could, like everything. Potentially. Is, yeah. yeah if gone. there's no comet or anything that like destroys the earth. Right. It's there. It, it won't be degraded. It's not like physical. It's not like a piece of paper. Ones and zeros, that'll, man. That'll disappear. Well, the, but, clou- well, the, the cloud... Does that that doesn't still exist after everything else is gone, right? I mean, that's going to be gone. Well, if there's a comet, it's definitely yeah, gone. No, we'll that's for, for, that's for sure. sure. You'd think, sure. I mean, it's called the cloud. You'd but think like maybe it has the potential of survival. Let's say we surpass our ability or, or, or we surpass uh, the threat of comets and super volcanoes and extreme climate change and like earth ending events. Okay, we like, we yeah. figure out a way around all of it. Right. And the human race just keeps evolving, keeps evolving. This this will stick around. It won't degrade it's just because great. of the natural elements of just being around. Because that ha- ha- that's how it used to be. The only shit yeah. around now from like ten thousand years ago was written in stone. Yeah. Like so, even if you did it in in like cement or like uh, um, like clay, like fucking no, it's not around. Well, how the about only like legends? Is stone. Like, I feel like legends last longer than stone. <sighs> yeah, but yeah, you but know what's how a legend? you know how it's they a, get it's fucked up. It's a game up, of whist- it's a game of telephone. Think, of, what's think a about legend? yeah, about but the, that's what's cool about it. It's yeah. like the same thing that makes it not tangible makes it live on forever. Yeah, but it gets no, all warped, you're not it. right? Well, you're ruined. Like, no, look, absolutely not. Whenever you're, you're like, I want to be on the internet. No, you're talking about. That's where I want to be. Yeah, no, when. Well, when you just keep a legend yeah. alive between people, people start to ma- embellish. You know, they start to like change sure. the story. Add their right. own shit. Like, how many people does it take when you like uh, uh, start some gossip before like the story gets out of control? Good thing no one embellishes on the internet. Not a no. person. No one does that. That's no. a quote from Abraham Lincoln, right? No. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. I read that on the internet. <laughs> no. There's no embellish. This, right. this You're not is allowed to embellish be, on the internet. This is going to be <laughs> what it's going to be. Right. Right. That's fair. This isn't going to change. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. this isn't going to be embellished. This right. is just, it's put on the internet as it is. It's the best. Totally. So, I'm with that you. being said, grandkids or great-grandkids or great-great-great-great-grandkids. All the greats. I'm talking to you. What's up? Because you have Fields DNA in you. Oh. And I'm going to give you some words of advice. <laughs> I thought you going to give us a bandana on that one. First. Oh, special. Weed is your friend. Alcohol is not. What? <laughs> I would say just the opposite. No, yeah, because you're a different person. Like, oh, it's yeah. just, the, the, I'm talking to oh, my talking, DNA. I'm sorry, I'm it's, talking, it's you're talking family, to right, exactly. like, <laughs> DNA. I'll look, talk to my DNA later. You can, you can talk second. to your right. DNA in a second. I'll have my... I, I've come to realize that genetically, I think I cannot have more than 10 drinks and um, be myself at all. I basically turn into an Alzheimer's patient that has no recollection of anything. You mean in the night? Yes, okay. right. I, there's a real limit. Right. You know, I enjoy a few, a few, you know, refreshments. Sure. But like, if I go over ten, which I did all the time in college, <laughs> I right. can, you can't do it. So the, there's a genetic problem. Be careful. Watch for that. Wait. So can I ask you? Can you smoke as much weed? Yeah, as I you can want? smoke as much as I want. Nothing. Really? Really, doesn't sure about that. Yeah. yeah, I remember some. Well, I, I mean, I could make I mean, myself some tired. Stories here. I feel like maybe I want to hear these stories. I get. To, I can make myself tired, right? Like I could. I mean, that's not... One time I got myself so drunk, I thought I was Michael Vick's agent. For real. I thought I was convinced all night that I had to get my client, Michael Vick, on the phone because there was a big deal that was needed to get made. Wow. That's for real. Like, it's almost like like amnesia. It's almost like I I drink myself into an alternate reality completely, where I'm not even... It's like a waking dream. You've been there for these. We've been there there for these. Were you there for Vick? No, no that was, that's college. That, that was yeah, college. Was but I mean, that's for real. Like, I will drink myself into not there at all. Like a different, a whole different person. And that doesn't happen with smoking. Nothing. No. No. Never. You're still the same person. You're just. 
Well, it's, it's just a whole different thing. You Kyle know, I, 2.0. No, it else is a totally different thing. Yeah, it works well with my bandana with my training. Why don't you go to your commercial again? Mm. <laughs> this is still the commercial. Oh, I'm this sorry. Is, oh, this is one long ass commercial. <laughs> yeah. All right. About your DNA. I tried well, to segue. That's, yeah. all, that's yeah. all. And then, <laughs> you know what else I'm going to say? Nothing. Because the lessons are important to be learned. And uh, you need to, you don't need any shortcuts. Okay. Embrace the suck. Start enjoying the hard shit. Don't be a weak that's, bitch. That's where all the lessons are. So every that's time good. you like want to complain that. and bitch about something not suiting you or like being difficult or or uh, some pain in your ass, fuck that. All right, that's teaching you a lesson. It's gonna it's gonna make you a better person. All the best shit that's ever happened to me has been the worst shit at the time, and then I have learned from that and evolved from that, and that's actually helped me become a better person but the good shit has been super pleasant hasn't never taught me a lesson ever not one lesson not one improvement to me has come from like when everything was great and i was sitting in a hammock on vacation hmm. rob do you agree <laughs> <laughs> uh i, I mean like, i understand what you're saying i feel like uh, when I look at my th those moments in my life, like the worst moments of my life, they're always the strongest lessons, totally. But I also don't think that you necessarily have to actively pursue terrible moments oh, just yeah. to learn. You know what I mean? It, it, that's I kind of like, That's the trick. It's, it's like I feel cheating, like you pursue right? delight and, and wonderful things, and along the way you find yourself in terrible moments, and then you use those... To learn and grow. You don't right. you don't feel a catalyst of just the bad moment is end up being in a light and awesome moment because if you'll say you are a person who just chases awful situations like I'm gonna sign up for an MMA fight today and just let's say a person really did it trained for eight weeks they did it lost one doesn't matter but isn't that in itself the reward at the very end the beautiful light moment the what the, the difficulty yeah isn't this the, the the awesome moment at the end just the catalyst of yeah the really terrible you did something different maybe. Sure. Mm -hmm. Right, you did something new. You challenge yourself. You, uh, I, I think, like, I think guys that that become like super billionaire rich, like, do shit like that. I think you know that's where, uh, like, Bronson was it Br Richard Branson? Yeah. Like why he like wants to island, go to right? space and shit. Like why he uh, he li he seems to live a pretty fucking extreme life. You know, sure. he's always on a plane. He's always traveling. He's busting his ass. How's this? Right, like he's he's finding difficulty. Yeah, you know, Finding wherever challenge. it is, I think yeah. pursuing challenge. He's Absolutely. pursuing yeah. challenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. You know, on purpose. Not too long ago, on his 91st birthday, George Bush Sr. went skydiving. Yeah, I remember. How about that? that? That's just a. That's like, what again, I'm saying. Super, man. yeah, super successful dude. He's like, oh, I'm gonna jump out of a plane today. Like, it's, I'm 90. I'm not mad at that. No, it's I respect awesome. that. 90. Kind of, towards I mean, that. So I mean I think that's it, living. I think that's it living at ninety. Us. But if you if you look around fucking everywhere, all I see is people trying to nerf the world, people trying to like get rid of difficult situations, Smith people machines. trying to figure out a workaround from anything that was hard. It's everywhere, right? I mean, like even in training, how, like you get a new client, what do they want? They want the shortest route shortest to the to the end to result. result. Yeah. Like they don't want they the want hard, the they, they, if they, if they were willing to work really hard, they would have figured it out by then. You know what I mean? If they were really, really willing, if you get a fucking P90X DVD and you follow it to the T and you bust your fucking ass and you eat exactly the way you're supposed to eat, you're going to have awesome results. It's going to work. I mean, if you're fully bought in, right. almost anything works. If you're fully bought into any system, it works. But the thing is, to buy fully into a system is hard, man. You have to commit to it. Yeah. But at the same token, I don't think anyone should necessarily just buy into any system. Like, you should, I don't know if you should ever commit to just a thing ever, because then you get dogma. It's a good point. And then you man. get crazy people like, if you don't, let's just use fitness as an example, if you're not low bar and you're just cheating yourself, you don't know what the fuck you're doing, young man. Like, and those they people talk like that are too. just, that's, that's how they speak. That's how they Most speak. of them yeah, are from no, those I places where people speak like that. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, that, um, that's kind of how it makes, it makes dogma. Like, it's just this awful, awful. That's how you get the worst of the worst. I'd rather have someone who didn't try than someone who's telling me exactly how to do this thing because there's only one way. It's like, ugh, pass. Think, or somehow if you can do both. Like, I love this angry. idea of, uh, like, two opposites, accepting two opposites at the same time. Where, like, you can fully buy into a system and at the same time question that system along the way. Ooh, yeah. That's wow. that's that deep. Oh, but that right is, now we're getting deep. No, but that like, is the system, can you? right? Can you do that? So what you're saying, is that possible? You're creating. Well, isn't that what science is? 
I mean, like, think about it because science is saying I, I want to think about it. We are uh, creating a system where we're going to review each other's work, so yep. we're very uh, critical and cynical about anyone else's findings, and okay. only the stuff yeah. that surpasses the consensus. When everyone agrees to a consensus, yeah. do we have like a real rule? Real, like, we know what's up. We know like what works. Yeah. So, like, that is. Uh, I mean, that's a church, right? Like that's a system. That's an ideology where it's self-critical of itself. Yeah. Anytime anything ever is produced in the world of science, someone's like, bullshit. And I'll try to figure out why. for the actual system. The system of science cannot be critical of its own system. No, but I think other people are critical of the system. People are. That's true. Outside of science. Well, because I think there is something. The scientific method is not. There's something to be said about, um, Philosophy and ideas and Those. like skipping the sen- skipping the step of proof, but coming up with thoughts and ideas as to the potential ways things work. Yeah. You know, if, in order to guide science in a direction, you have to have an idea uh, for the way something works. Right? That was a pretty fucking sick idea. So you kind of need philosophers to shine the light way out, like, and kind of do a little bit of like logic guesswork. To help the scientists know where to go, know where to like line up and aim and and figure things out more critically. So the two work together, right? Yeah, sure. One's kind of ahead of the other, right? <sighs> nope. Yeah, one's ahead of the other, but one is much nope. more accurate. <laughs> uh, no, I said you know it's pretty ahead of the game. Bandana training. Where can people see you? Rob? Yeah. <laughs> where can people see that? We should continue to bring this all back. And the bandana I, training. I just finished one the plug. I want you to get the plug in. That was so good. I'm trying. Uh, so for like what what someone goes to your website, what are they expecting, and how, where is it? First off, uh, well, bandana training is the home is bandanatraining.com, so it's a health and wellness portal online primarily. Uh, portal. It's just the conglomeration of all of my health and fitness and nutrition ideas. That's I guess bandana training in a nutshell. Dope. Uh, yeah. You know, um, I want to I want to know which who's here with us today. Is it Rob Salaver? Or is it bandana training? Ooh. Because I do I think... think we got a bit uh, dude, tell me about this. I, this do, let, I want to ask you about this because I uh, think you have a little bit of a personality that's not 100% who you are, but like it is required in order to do the job that you're doing for people. Like there's a bit of a... Like you have to take on and commit to a personality in order yeah. to like gain your audience and sort of... Like Howard Stern... On the air and Howard Stern at home are like they're based on the same people, right? But like one is a job, one is a person, sure. And I think it's true with like anybody in media, yeah. right? Like I think the more podcasts we do, yeah, we're I'll changing. find like, oh wow, my podcast personality yeah. isn't my exactly podcast voice just came yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah exactly, yeah, right? right? Sounds like, quite the same. Are you? Because you've really, um, you've done an awesome job, like building a following. You have a lot of Twitter followers, a big Facebook page. You do a lot of content, so you have to like you have to excite people. There's there's actually pressure for you, which there isn't for us. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's a real job, for you. you know. <laughs> so money. like I would imagine that there's like dickens. when once there's sort of something on the line that a you would develop um, and commit to a, like aspects of your own personality that come out more with your website. Well, I would say that we do this. We all do this. I think anyone does this in any sort of environment. So our environment sort of influences how we talk, what we... You don't, you don't wear the same thing to a, a premiere that you do to hang out with your girlfriend one night. You know what I mean? So we're always making these choices based on our environment, and it's no different when you have a brand online. Yeah. But I do... I would also say... So it's kind of like putting on a uh, an outfit. Work, the work you know what I mean? Yeah, like, sure. it's like, it's like, yeah, like kind of choosing your flavor. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And I think you have to... Oh, but I also, too. yeah, I also think that it's important that that flavor is authentic to who you are because first and foremost, when I'm dealing with younger trainers or, or people who are interested in developing a brand online, one of the first things I tell them is that you have to be authentic because if you're not authentic, I feel like one, it's not sustainable and two, it's really not interesting. Like people don't follow uh, shit that feels fake. Yeah. So People you have to really, be true They have a good yourself. nose for it, too. Yeah. yeah. I it has, so. yeah you say even, it's essentially just like, would you say it's an exaggerated version of yourself or a certain part of yourself? And that's why it's you. 
Yeah, I don't even know if it's exaggerated. It's just uh, like honed in and sort of a curated version of myself. Uh, I agree with you, Kyle, in that you're like, you have to choose certain aspects that come to define your brand. It's not all of me. There's parts of me that aren't necessarily bandana training. Uh, but, you, you know, you pick and choose. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that's what I'm hoping to get tonight. I want to get the Rob Salaver. The, the, the rest real. of it? Yeah, yeah I want to get the rest of it. I want to get everything that isn't. I yeah, get you're like, I, isn't. I'm over Van Damme. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? I'd, not, I'd rather hear about Rob. Band, no. I've had enough of Van Damme. Fuck that shit. Yeah, man, that's shoved, shoved in our faces, it's left and right. Sore. Man, this whiskey's so good. Is it shoved in your face? Jeez. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not. I'm just jealous. I feel like I'm raping you. <laughs> yeah, it's raping really just you. I'm so jealous. Yeah. Seriously. Just my jealousy. We could all have. You know followers. what though? Like Rob busts his fucking ass yeah. every single day that I I walk in uh, for my evening clients. Like even if if Rob has like fifteen minutes, he's at a computer. Yeah. Yeah, I've, yeah, just, I've never not seen you not he's writing. A, he's when in the you're office. Not training someone unless we're out drinking or something. But I've right. it's, and it's really like every time I see him, like I need to work harder. Like, Dude, wa not, yeah, watching I'm just not working kind of hard watch, enough. Watching Rob, yeah, like it, it makes sense. It's like. 20,000 Twitter followers. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right, because yeah. he works his ass off all the time. <laughs> <laughs> like, he really... He's he, actually doing He really it. is doing it, man. Every moment. It's very cool to That's watch. Because kind of I feel like when, when I first started at Peak, he had a tenth of that. Like, it was maybe, like... He had started the process of his yeah. own website and, like, promoting a brand and all that. But it was, like, maybe, like, 3,000 or 5,000 Twitter followers. Like, he... Yeah. I mean... Yeah, so I mean, I remember when I celebrated a thousand on yeah, Facebook. Yeah, I was like a thousand followers. Wow! And then, I mean, not that long ago, I celebrated a hundred thousand, and I was like, "Fuck yeah!" Boom. It's really you have a, a city's cool, worth. It, how fun. crazy is it that when you like, start thinking about the numbers? Yeah, it's, you have a fucking large town, like right. Omaha, Nebraska, maybe following you, dude. The the whole I haven't done the yeah the population on Omaha, but yeah, I can imagine. Like, <laughs> we should look it up. I mean, just in the is last Omaha five following? years, currency. Their social currency has become a real currency. True. Like it's a real. Jen Selter. Like, you know what's Jen. really interesting? Social currency. If you really think Total. about it. Off of aesthetics. It might be a currency of the future. It might really be like it's how worth. you how you gain income. Like like just pretty much across the board. Because I mean, it is right now. I think yeah, because, like people are getting paid for their social following. Yeah, and like when companies. I'm a are little hiring, off. Omaha's got a million. Whatever. Right. One point eight. That's oh, Almost that's all of Nebraska. Oh, that's Nebraska. Oh, that's Nebraska. oh well, okay. Omaha's 434,000 people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right. I'm, not, I'm on their tail. <laughs> you have a quarter's worth of Nebraska. But, of dude, Omaha. there's a real value to 1,000 followers. There's a real value to marketing companies, yeah. right? There's, there's a value of that attention. If you have a 1,000, 100,000, a million, 10 million, whatever, like you get a, a, a number, Right. And that used to be how we all kept score. We used to keep score by like you made a hundred thousand dollars last year, you made a million dollars. Like that's how we all judged each other and kind of would say like that person is successful, that person is not successful. But in just like five or ten years, like now you can literally look and be like, Oh, that person has that many likes, that sure. person has that many followers, and you can say, well, that is a measure of their success. Yeah, like, that absolutely. is an actual measure of like how much they've worked. That is a measure of like whether they've, you know, really busted their ass and picked a passion and gone after it and worked hard. Yeah. That's, that's crazy because my parents would never understand that. This is but thing, I'm know, already starting to see it. I think they would because no matter what, let's, let's reverse time, 100 years. The most popular items, let's say it was fucking a, a certain brand of whiskey, at the end of the day, it's just the it's just the popularity of that whiskey that then makes it worth something. Like depending on how many people buy it, how popular it is, that's worth a lot in public perception. Now we just have it digitized and, and numerical. Right. It's the only difference I feel like. And in front of our eyes, and we see we can yeah, constantly right, see the yeah. flow. It's we have a number chart right in front of totally. our face. It's essentially the same thing, but more efficient way. Yeah, right. which is the internet, right? right. It's like the social the construct hasn't changed. Just the way we engage is changing. Yeah. And now we're staring at a number instead of knowing that a brand is just awesome. Right. right. Do you think you knew that you were onto that when you kind of set out on your quest of bandana, bandana uh, uh, fitness? Bandana training. Bandana training. training. Sorry, dude. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Do you own bandana fitness too? No, I hate. You I, buy that. Can I buy that? <laughs> so, I'm, totally totally I'm gonna buy. You know, if nobody bought that, I'm buying that. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm buying it. I'm gonna go buy it when I get home. 
a pain in my ass, this podcast. <laughs> buying that shit right away. Bandana fitness. Uh, Yoink. That's actually a very common mistake. I, I wonder why that uh, people say that quite a bit. Fitness is more popular, Makes me man. want to punch them in the what? face. I'm, <laughs> bandana fitness. Oh, sorry. No, it's okay. Well, it's I just, I don't mean, I, it was the angel sent me. Yeah, I told you, like, I don't talking. do well with alcohol. <laughs> um, no, but like when, when Fast you, forward an hour. When there, man, you first, you know, what's up? So, is, is this the greatest brand ever? <laughs> Am I doing it already? No. <laughs> <laughs> no you made it so secure. You made it secure. Is it 30? Oh, fuck, it's only been 30 minutes. Okay. Damn it. Oh, you drunk <sighs> asshole. Oh, no. Okay. Slow down. Um, <laughs> Robert. Um, did, when you first set on bandana training and yeah. <laughs> you started putting your effort into it, did yeah. you have the expectation that following and likes and social media would be as valuable as it is today? Uh, you know, I really, I, that was not on my radar from the beginning. From the beginning, it was the question I was asking myself is how can I reach more people? Because I knew I loved doing what I did in the gym and uh, I knew it was successful and I wanted, it, it sort of grew organically because actually a lot of my family back home was asking me a lot about health and fitness. So I was in correspondence with them through email. Um, and that kind of evolved into more writing and more talking to, uh, you know, various people uh, online. And then I was asking myself, all right, like, how can I make this uh, a bigger, more accessible brand? And that's how the whole social media aspect of it came about. Wow. It's pretty cool. The, can I ask you a question about that? Yeah, sure. Like, the process, I, I've, so, you're pretty unique in that. You're a really, you were a really successful wrestler in, in college, right? Pretty good. Yeah, I was a... I was a college rep. I mean, really successful. I I had teammates who were really successful. I would yeah. say I was. But you made it to the big game. That's the big game for college. For anyone oh, yeah, who wants totally. to wrestle. That's the biggest, yeah, you made biggest it to the, stage. To the, exactly. the league, right? Yeah. I've never seen anyone work harder than college wrestlers in my life, ever. I Just, totally agree with I've that. I've never seen it. It's, it's, it's a different type of grit. With that being said, what is the mental process that you take or undergo when approaching your business? What, like, how, what, how, what, is, what does Rob do in the morning? Like, what are the steps to, you know, really widen your audience? Because at a certain, because now I did the numbers before I got here. I think you have like total, like, you're near like 300,000 Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, total followers. Yeah. So three quarters of Omaha. Right. You're near that already. <laughs> so what is, like, what, what do you do? The approach that like I'm sure it changed over time, but how do you mitigate that that responsibility now? Well, you know, one thing I will say is that like I have to put limits on social media because it's very easy to uh, get caught up in it and spend too much time with it. Oversaturate. Yeah. Well, it, you know, it's just like it's fun. I feel like we all fall into that where you're like you're scrolling through Facebook and then one click leads to another that leads to another. And all of a sudden you've been reading like random articles about cats for 30 minutes and you're like, what the hell am I doing with my morning? Cats are great. No, nothing against cats. I love cats too. <laughs> uh, so at this point, it's more about limiting my social media time um, so that I can maximize time spent to other projects. Like, for example, unless it's not. Like writing, like, uh, you know, product development, like the evolution of the site, what another version of the site might look like. Mm -hmm. uh, and like bigger projects, like the possibility of a book or um, the possibility of affiliating with other brands, right. that kind of stuff. I guess what I'm asking is like, what is the steps to then work on said things? Like, do you do you plan out your month in advance, like time management, like uh, this hour of this day, I'm doing this. Yeah. Have you ever done so one uh one little project that really helped me was to very specifically record all of your minutes in a day as to what they're like directed at. Oh no. So I've done that and then divided into big categories. So I was like, how much time do I spend on social media? Mm -hmm. How much time do I spend training in the gym? How much time do I spend with my online clients? How much time do I spend doing the various activities that I do? And I created a graph, literally a fucking it's like pie a graph. Spreadsheet. Yeah, right. And then I said, what do I want my day to look like? So this is what my day looks like now. What do I want it to look like? How much time do I want to spend on social media? How much time do I want to spend pursuing my various goals? And I said, all right, I have to spend less time here and more time here. And then I sort of use that, that new pie graph as like, this is my ideal day. This is my perfect day. And then work towards making that happen. That that's, was super helpful for me. So Have you done that? No. And that's yeah. kind of going back to what Kyle was saying in that, you know, doing things that, sound, that are really shitty will make you just way better. Because that just sounds awful. It's, Having to sit down. just like It's not that bad, plan. though, man. I, I don't I think know. Like, me, you know, like why is it that it is mm -hmm. like everything I've ever gotten... Weird. 
I sat down. I wrote it down. I wrote down what I wanted. I oh, thought yeah. about where Big I was dream. right now. And I thought, uh, like, what is all? what are all the steps that happen in between where I'm at right now and where I, what I want? Yeah. And as soon as you sit down and you put it on paper, you sort of make it real. That's like step one. Like if you, and, and it's so fucking weird because like I'm, I know so many people and I've met so many people that like have a real dream that really want something and they've never made it. They've never brought it into the physical world. They've never sat down with a fucking piece of paper and a pencil and just written it down and said, I am here. I want to be here. What happens in between? Sure. And That's it's, it's such a happen. simple yeah. thing to do. And if you do it, like you'll you'll sit back and be like, why the fuck did it take me five years to do that? Why the fuck, like <laughs> yeah. what what have I been doing? Like what's my problem? That was easy. Yeah. And and it's like it's the same thing as like deciding you want to lose some weight. It's the same thing as deciding you want to get a little bit stronger. You sit down, you fucking write where you're at right now, and you write where you, what you want. Yeah. And you fucking figure out what's in between those. Sure. And just having that, I I mean I have my goal list on my bathroom like wall and. uh just having that every morning to look at is a constant reminder of what you're pursuing. And that's super helpful too. So writing it down, I think, makes it legitimate. It, it brings it into this world, like you said. Yeah. Uh, and then having that constant reminder every day, you're looking at it and you're saying, this is what I'm pursuing. And I think that's there's magic in that as well. Bringing that uh, dream from the ether well, to the and physical I, well, world. Well, and and nobody, nobody so. can den deny that there's like there's different personalities within our personality, right? Like there's there's the really ambitious version of us. There's the really lazy version of us. There's yeah. the like fucking warrior. I'm gonna kick anything's ass that steps in front of me. Time, like sort of personality. There's we all live with a harmony of personalities, yep. and by setting reminders or like sort of like. Uh, um, alerts yeah. to like, like from, from that very the the very dedicated and ambitious personality that lives in there that like that guy wrote this putting that on the wall reminds me to like keep that guy like in in charge in focus yeah you know keep that alive you can engineer your life to bring about the best versions of yourself that you yeah. want right totally. But, you know, it was interesting what you said earlier about, like, you've never had good experiences from your vacations. I, I was just recently traveling, and I do think that life isn't always about productivity. And I have to remind myself of this because, uh, because I think that our, a big part of our culture is, like, what have you done? Like, that's kind of what we, we look around and we, we ask people, like, who the fuck are you? What have you done? And I think that if we're, if we're asking the question, how do we maximize our life? Um, that's not the only question we need to ask. I think there are other aspects of life that are super, super important to live awesomely that include sometimes laying on a beach on a hammock, you know? You that's sure? cool too. So oh. I feel like uh, we have to be careful about getting too, uh, too like alpha, too productivity centric because there's more to life than that. Definitely. And let that me, comes from me, a guy who's like, that, I'm all about productivity. Let me, let me yeah. give you a, a hypothetical. Oh, shit. You have the guy. Yeah, no, you have the guy. It's Kyle's hypothetical. No, no, no. no, 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 no. Okay, no. you have a guy that works as so ass. We're in outer space. All right. <laughs> Got a Not fucking yet. alien yeah, or Bigfoot? Right. Not right. Yet. Okay. Not yet. Okay, you have a guy so that My works. great, great grandkids. <laughs> <laughs> and your great, great grandkids. <laughs> Who's winning the fight, bro? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right. Ready? Yeah, the I guy, this guy, he he fucking works at Enterprise Rental Rental Car. He runs his own spot, right? Okay, got uh, it. He works a hundred hours a week. He watches washes all these cars. He busts his fucking ass. He is doing everything Enterprise asks him to do, and right. some. And he, you ask him the same question: What do you want? And he writes: I want an island with a hammock and beautiful weather and no interruption and hot babes everywhere and I want just everything that I could ever desire in front of me. Do you think that guy would end up being optimally happy with his decision? So I just, you see what I did? I inverted. I inverted your the super alpha, like wanting, figuring out the productivity. Sure. To the guy like wanting pure softness. Right. Yeah. And I think again, like that brings us back full circle to the fact that like it's never one or the other. It's both, right? And yeah. they need each other. Totally. It's like 
two different yeah. sides of the same coin. Duality. Did you say before? Right. It's the duality. Opposites. The duality of the universe. So, song. yeah, if you're going to, like, write your perfect life, you better write both ends. You know, you better, like, don't be, like, don't be, don't fool yourself into thinking that you're going to win out one way or the other. Sure. That one side is going to beat the other because right. they, they almost need each other. So if you're going to write out your perfect life, your perfect day, you know, if you really figure out what the fuck you want out of this life, you should really write what kind of, of difficulties do I want in my life on purpose, you know, and then what kind of pleasures do I want in my life on purpose. And you, it better be fairly balanced or else like one end is going to slingshot over the other. Yeah. You know? Totally. I'm with that. I could co-sign that philosophy. I feel like I need to give myself more difficulty in life. Rob, you feel you, like it's been too easy? Yeah. I feel like I've, it's been awesome. I, I, uh, I was talking to Mel the other day. We were just sitting, you know, like married people do. Right. Sit, in front of the TV. Lot, in front of the TV. A lot of sitting eating, while you're married. Was <laughs> eating, eating, men now? Is that eating, the show? Eating Pinkberry. Pinkberry. Good call. Yeah. Cute. Figuring out the next time we were going to bang. Petting your dachshunds. <laughs> do you have to um, schedule it? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah usually. usually. It's a process. <laughs> do you schedule Why do bang? I know you this? you schedule banging? No. Yeah. Well, sometimes. Yeah. Sort of. Like, like, like when, next Wednesday, man. Don't forget. Next Wednesday, like make sure you shower. The busier she gets. The busier she gets, yeah, for sure, definitely. Fuck. You gotta like. You know, every time I talk in. to people who are married, uh, I'm a little terrified. Yeah, you should be. <laughs> okay, <laughs> like it's, well, like that they, helps. They, weren't, times, they right? weren't fucking kidding, man. There's no, there's no coming back. Yeah. It's, it, it, this is the analogy that Except I've come to figure out that is like the best analogy I can describe. You give up. Like, what, what's your favorite meal? Like peanut butter. Okay. Right. So. Mm. It's a meal to me. No, it's you got meal. okay. No, <laughs> let, wait. Let me re, let me refer, rephrase okay, the question. Sorry, I was you a have bad to answer. you have to pick a meal that you have to eat for the rest of your life, and you have to consider all aspects of that. Like so, a like wife. You, that's what you're saying. You would want to pick something that's going to make you very healthy, right? Like you don't want to pick something that's like fucking peanut butter because in about a year you'll probably be dead, right? You know, you'll be missing all kinds of like nutrients. So pick like one meal. That is going to be the meal, you know, consider your health, consider what you enjoy, consider what you like, yeah. but that's it. Like no more Cheetos. That's a tough choice, man. You know, no more Cheetos, no more. And by uh, Cheetos, we mean big booty bitches. Yeah, no more, right. no more <laughs> Ben and Jerry's, no more. Uh, and you know that oh, shit isn't, big booty bitches. you know that shit isn't <laughs> as them. good <laughs> for you, you know, but you make a better, you, the bigger part of you knows you're better off committing to one that is optimal for you. So it sucks, but <laughs> it's <laughs> worth it. You know what I mean? Like, well, it, it's like, so. that, like the best way to describe marriage is that's it. That's it. I don't it's know, like, no I mean, guy I don't know if I'm in the a, world is like, gonna... yes, I would love to not have sex with anyone you're, else forever. But, but There's none speaking, of them. But you're also speaking strictly on the sexual physical level. Nothing oh, yeah. to do with the emotional stability. Well, no, it's love, awesome having a teammate. Right, right. Like, right. Dude, Nothing to do with that. You're speaking just. No, the I'm just room. talking. You. Thank right. you, Alec. Right. Thank you. Right. You're right. Well, yes, I'm purely okay. speaking from the sexual part of each one of our personalities. Sure. Well, I guess my question is that no one obviously commits to one meal for the rest of their life. That would be insane. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so to follow through on your analogy, right? Uh, that. Doesn't make sense. Yeah. We're okay. we, we are, dude, we are, right? we are just, an no, absolutely yeah, like, insane marriage society. Doesn't make dude, sense. I, marriage doesn't make sense. Marriage is insane. We're getting don't get me wrong. <laughs> Done makes sense. But here's the thing. I think every one of us in this room is insane. <laughs> mm. Here's the thing. Like, think of like the girl that you love the most, right? Like, right. let's say we love, you know, we Jen live. Selter. <laughs> Jen Selter. Jen Selter. You love her the most. You're you're married. You guys love each other. It's awesome. Right. All right. Let's say we then just shift the world into a world where everybody's banging each other. You're telling me like the girl that you're, you love the most, you're just totally cool with some other dude, just throwing it, just throwing it in her. Just, <laughs> yeah. Goodness. Bam. Thank you. Bam. For the demo. Bam. Right. No, none of us would be, you know, like the, we're, we're victims of this fucking culture too. Like the, like no well, matter. Victims of our biology. Right. Right. <laughs> victims of our biology. I mean, sh how should we be run? We should be run by like like the way chimpanzees. Polyamorous, do it. yeah. yeah. It makes, everybody it makes sense. banging. Like it should be. It should not be a thing. There no, shouldn't I don't be a think weird. So. I don't agree with you guys. I think anthropologists oh, really? would disagree with you. Yeah, I think, I think so I too. I think anthropologists would disagree. With you. I do. Paul yeah, Amory but, but was the way. Listen, let's hear like, his, let's if hear we should his be idea. run that way, we would be run that way. Like, what are you guys saying? 
I'm saying the church infiltrated culture, oh. and then people started getting married. And the diamond industry. And they tried to— Do you think uh, it's a function of the—I mean, the church came out of some sort of, like, human necessity. Like, even the church was born out of w- w- something inside of us. Right. Good things. This pursuit, yeah, right. yeah, this it, pursuit it of, have, a, of a higher being it, and yeah, this sure. pursuit of the, the ideals that kind of have governed it us. It probably so. served a purpose, to sustain. right? At a point. It made to sustain virtues, yeah. right? But the, the problem is but, that we're rolling on momentum from fucking 2,000 years ago. Yeah, you can't, you can't keep we're reading still, that game of telephone, telephone we're, that's 3,000 years old. Yeah. Right. We're still, like, rolling on the exact same, like, momentum and thought processes of, like, dumb people from 2,000 years ago <laughs> that, like, didn't even know how to tell time. They couldn't even tell you the time. You want to know how much information they had? Not enough to tell you the time. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Okay? Like, think of the information we have now. It's a lot. (laughs) Things have changed. We probably shouldn't be... Well, you're talking about the development of science. I mean, I think that's also an interesting point is, like, sometimes it feels like the smarter we get, uh, we're also losing something. Yeah. I would say we're in, like, a spiritual dark age, whereas before spirituality was... Way more accessible. You think so? You think so? And even with all these new, just like there's tons and tons of like uh, retreatment centers. They're called the things for ayahuasca and wachuma and all these different. Sure, because like, be- that's not a, that's the new age of spirituality. Uh, I mean, I think it's like maybe it's on the rise. I think more and more people are asking those kind of questions, mm. and so it's becoming more accessible. But uh, I also think that because we have so many distractions in our life constantly. Uh, we we don't have the same access to spirituality as they did a few centuries ago. So while we have more knowledge on one hand, I think we have ne- less knowledge on the other hand. What were you going to say about uh, relationships not necessarily being optimal in a polyamorous way? Yeah, expand on what, that. What a were little you going to say on that? You were going to go off, but we like, what would really be that bad if we were all banging? Yeah. Well, what would you? What would if you? We were all banging. What do you feel yeah. is the best? Well, what do you? There's feel no is the best relationships. Way? Relationships are I a think thing monogamy, that are silly. I, like I am a, I'm a firm believer in monogamy. I think that it's a, I think it's a, I think it's, I, mm, what do I think? I think that it is awesome and uh, what do they say about um, democracy? I think. Necessary the, evil. No, it's like, the, <laughs> uh, it's like yeah, the worst. Yeah, I, I kind of, <laughs> like a necessary evil. It's the best I, form of government that's yeah, not the worst. No, I, I guess. I, you know, I, up, dude, dude yeah, there's yeah. definitely good Democracy. parts about being married. I think I'm better. Here's the thing. I think if I never got married, I'd probably die in about nine years. Like if I had to guess. Well, we're hanging out, yeah. I, I am I terrible. think it's democracy is the least worst option. Okay. I need a like the less monogamy. least worst option. <laughs> but this is that's a that's a pretty pessimistic hmm. view. <laughs> I, I you know yeah, what? Like I I do I just think I can't handle being single. I'm better. I'm a better person when I'm But this is the thing. You, you really think I mean, can I ask you? You really think everyone should just be banging each other? I think it could work. Yeah. Is it is it a, yeah. yeah, I think it could work like uh, just as well as this if not better. I in 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 saying this, I don't think Kyle or myself. Also, everyone is banging each other. Like, yeah, it's true. Like, right? s- like that's what happens. <laughs> like, like, yeah. like in New York, wait, are you kidding me? Wait, like, as I true. think about, it, I'm like, of course. Like, that's actually, actually that's actually what happens. happening any, yeah, anyway. What, like right now, Tinder's a lot a thing. of yeah, like Tinder oh, people imagine. are banging. Can you imagine how much adultery is going on right now in the city? That actually terrifies me. I mean, that's what terrifies me Does about it? monogamy. Adultery, it, yeah, yeah, it's, it's like the biggest fear in this, any relationship. So then, why, why, do, why can't we just supersede well, so these common. weird, weird barriers that we set on monogamy? Why can't you have your life partner, but realize every once in a while, I want to fuck something weird? Like, why can't that <laughs> be a it, thing? I think that's why I we think have, a has, lot of people do, and that. it has nothing to do with the, your partner being again. This comes from a guy who knows Dude, nothing that's about what, but that's what <laughs> it has <laughs> nothing to do with the low quality we of all partner. Know nothing about that's what <laughs> that's what <laughs> internet Kyle. internet porn did. That I'm, it fixed that problem. It did not fix it because yeah, dudes did. don't want to fuck. No, I'm less. Less for sure. It helps. It's a band aid. Porn is a whole is a whole problem in and of itself. It's mitigated the issue. I abuse, actually stopped yeah. watching porn. So did I. I'm right with you. I stopped. Yeah. Totally. I'm like, clean sometimes, off the, like, sometimes I stop watching porn. <laughs> I, then I always come back and watch yeah, porn. You're, I'm like, like, you're I mean, like no, sometimes no. I fast and then I have <laughs> yeah. my next meal. Right. It's like, like that's not fasting, dude. That's just what people do when they're full. Cool. <laughs> but, here's, but here's here's the thing. That's here's different. Do I 
Do I think you're like I, I'm a I'm a vegetarian until my next steak? Until right? bacon's on <laughs> yeah, the plate. Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. Because here's the thing. Yeah, no. How, do you really think for a second Rob's never gonna watch porn again? No. <laughs> no. Not, not for a hot but second. That, I mean, that'll be that. That would be within. Two months, you'll watch porn again. I'm two and a half months clean, by the way. Just saying. Really? Two and a half. I mean, I it's, what I'm saying that. is like well it's it's a well, matter. It helps of time. a lot with the boners. It's a matter. It, maybe it'll be two months. I maybe think it'll you be condition six. yourself. Maybe it'll to be five get years. off on shit that's that's actually not that that Feasible. has very little to, to do with when will being midgets intimate fighting with a girl. Anything happen? It's just not. Yeah, it's just weird. And I then think I was finding a good thing. I think I that I wasn't enjoying sex as much. Do you really? find Yeah, it? yes. No, no I, it I, 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 I find that I, insa- I I've enjoy talked it more. To you very yeah. like to me it's just it's fucking um it's 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 just it building anticipation. You know, it's like, oh man, that's awesome. I'm gonna have that one day. Like yeah. you know, like one it, right. it'll keep I, I mean I admit you get some great ideas from porn. You do. <laughs> you're like you're like, oh shit, I gotta try that. That right vagina right probably right. feels pretty good. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah I, I'm, I'm gonna that, put right. my thing in a vagina too. And this, like when I do it's gonna be good. Be awesome. Like that's that's sort of what my brain's thinking. It's I don't not, know, man. It's I think like it's just... such a different construct. Like you're watching a screen. Uh, it's all you. It's there's nothing yeah, about like intimacy it's, with it's someone. It's like to branch off what Rob's saying. This generations of young, this being my own generations yeah. of young men who were raised with the internet, who have always had it, um, is the highest generation ever for people under thirty to have erectile dysfunction. Right, and it's directly correlated. Well, I mean, to we, nonstop can, porn. Can right. we be honest? I would also say it's directly correlated to uh, maybe like a less healthy lifestyle for in sure. general. Totally. So that I think but like the the both of those play into sure. the fact that guys are not having the erections that it's they true. should. But I know in my own personal experience that when I limited the porn consumption, that sex just got way better. Just way better. I was able yeah. to just... Just is how it works. It just, for me, it worked. Because, you know, when you, when you view porn from fucking age six... Right. To twenty two, you're gonna see a lot of weird shit. Yeah, no, can so I definitely you, do you distinguish between masturbation and porn? Real thing. What do you mean? Like, do you masturbate without porn? Well, when I was watch, I would always masturbate to porn when I was watching right. porn. And now you masturbate without porn. Yeah, just don't. Right. Well, so or I'll oh, just go have sex. Right, or have sex, but you don't not masturbate. No, of course not. It's ridiculous. <laughs> ridiculous. Hey, you There's know, limits what, to this. Bro. Like, what are you talking you about? Just, what am I insane? What's wrong with you? Come on. <laughs> this is silly. You, and you can't not. What kind not of question masturbate. is that, Rob? Oh, no. Please, Rob. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, porn's a bad thing. What do you think? Not a, no, 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 it's not a bad thing. I just think in moderation. I just think that moderation. it's not for me. Right. Moderation. Right. Not bad. It's not. I agree with you. Can't, that. Don't you, any any extreme. Well, but that's the problem awful. with porn. It's so easy to not be moderate with it. Well, that's yeah, a problem. But that's a problem. It becomes very, very, you, you very start, easy. You start sure. off and you're like, oh yeah, I just need to you know, rub one out. And then like four hours later, you have 38 tabs open. You're like, you're fucking. <laughs> yeah, you and you're just like, tabs. how did I get yeah, to I amputees like, oh, fucking God. dragons? Yeah, yeah, what is this? When does this like, happen? Uh, yeah, this is me. What? Is she enjoying that? Anyway. Yeah, that's a problem. But that's, that's the also problem the same problem with alcohol and al- and whiskey or whatever. They and, right, it's a moderation. Thing. Moderation. And processed food and yeah. soda and right. like uh, all Boobies. the vices, so many yeah, vices that we have. We, we got to start preaching this. Humans. Right? You got to say, hey, dudes, um, with the jerk in it and the porn, <sighs> like just you got to gotta keep it to like a moderate Well, they say amount. the poison's in the dosage, right? right? Yeah, exactly. So right. it's like all things... In moderation. In moderation. But, but we'll like, say nobody's moderation. really, there's there's no PSAs for like, hey, guys, <laughs> like, <laughs> chill out. But there is. There is, there is mean, one, are there? there? There's a TED Talk on this. Have you ever seen a PSA? Ver- yes. There's a, well, not PSA, but there's a TED, TED talk, talk on this very topic. And if you're a young person, men, watching this, uh, for sure go look that up. Just look up just erectile dysfunction pornography TED Talks and yeah. that's what gave me like a huge so I was like am I broken it is and I watched that I was like okay it is something I think figure it out. you need to keep an eye on for yourself yeah for sure like there needs to be part of you that's like alright asshole st- chill the fuck out mm, like, super ego. you're not you're not getting anything out of this this is just your your monkey brain has taken over your entire body right you know your early version self your DNA is like telling you what to do yeah. you're not in charge of your own actions you're purely giving in to like your genetic predisposition. Yeah. Constantly predis- feed that disposition. good Tough feeling. Yeah. But, but that's what got us here in the first place. For that, sure. That consistency so of wanting to feed that you, good feeling. That's the thing. You, you, shouldn't, um, you shouldn't feel, feel guilt 
over it. You know, you shouldn't feel like there's something wrong with you or bad about it, but you should be no, like, you have, you have the wrong. ability to like see this for what it is and direct yourself to shit that you actually yeah. know is better for you. Yeah. You know, be your own parent in that, so, in that sense. I just know me personally, if I get back on that porn kick, it's just, it's chaos. Well, you well know, sometimes black and white I'm, I'm a weak it's man. Like, right. You gotta say I'm a weak nothing person. because... Yeah. When you say a little bit, it turns into a lot of bit. Yeah. And that's, I mean, I think anytime you're changing habits, that's a, that's a valuable lesson. Sometimes cold turkey is the best option. Yeah. yeah. And you've then been, eventually you can start to explore your limits. But initially, I'm in that phase where I'm like, nope. Yeah, no, I, I feel you, know, man. I feel more and more like uh, what we do as trainers is just to help people change their habits. Like that, it's, it's, it's much, I think like the, uh, the in instant perception is just that you like write programs, you show people how to exercise, how to like do movements properly. But what you, what the, where the real value is and what people are really paying for is for you to help them change their, themselves, change their habits, change what they do, change their outlook, change like their, their habits. Yeah. Right. I think that you also create these virtuous cycles. So when you teach someone that they can set a goal and then work hard and achieve the goal, they do it again and do it again and do it again in the weight room. And then they start saying, well, I can do that outside of the weight room yeah. so that I can basically say, well, what do I want? Set that goal, work mm -hmm. towards it and accomplish it. So that like this virtuous cycle in the weight room is really a training ground for anything that you want to accomplish. And, and that's powerful. And that's what's so awesome, not only about this job, but just fitness in general. It's so, it is, you know, people always say, you know, you need a really good uh, lifting age in order to really see results. But it's, lifting is really fucking tangible. You could take a client from session one, session 12, they're, everything's vastly higher. All their numbers are up. And they can see that. It's really measurable. Sure. And just using what you basically described as a, a set uh, pattern of success and keep following the patterns and being consistent and doing what you're supposed to do. People get encouraged to just keep coming back, and then, like you said, it goes back into their regular life, and they establish some sort of pattern in whatever new field that they venture into. Yeah, it's it is just one way to do it. You can do Which it. Is just, awesome, you can do it in any fucking anything. But fitness for me, anyway, it's it's been the most um, like really quick in seeing results right. initially. It's it's pretty fucking awesome. And yeah. then you're changing lives. You're literally changing their lives. You're not just changing their bodies. And that's some powerful shit. Yeah. Somewhere along the line, the last two years, I've I've like redirected my entire practice from a. I I, I used to think that it was a very biomechanical approach, meaning like there was a a certain number of sets, a certain number of reps, a certain weight, a certain weight relative to the max, a certain method that just made the best results. That created if you follow this rule book, there are rules. Follow this, A1, this, mm -hmm. A2, this. You must and if have. you follow these rules and, and you get a program or you get direction from someone that knows these rules, that you will find success. I have found that to not be 100% true. Like it, it's only dependent on the driver behind the, uh, the machine. Mm -hmm. You know, it's only dependent on the software behind the hardware. And if you have a, if your software is fucked up, if like the, the operating system behind this human body, this biomechanical body is fucked up, it's useless to approach it from a biomechanical standpoint until you fix the software behind it, until you fix like the operating system. Like what is this person motivated, motivated by? What do they actually want? How do they handle stress? How do they respond to change? What is their outlook from day to day. And if these things are broken, it doesn't matter. You can fix the the body and the biomechanical issues all day. Nothing's going to happen. It's going to keep keep going back to the same problems yeah. because the director, the the software, the observer needs an upgrade. Yeah. So how do you go about uh, helping the software? I the so the thing that I tend to do is put people in difficult situations. Yeah. And what I find is like the most valuable lessons and the most valuable thing I can do for any client is put them in a situation that they don't think that they will succeed in. Yeah. And then see if they succeed. And if they do, you'll watch that person grow right in front of your eyes. You'll like in a heartbeat, in a moment, they didn't think that they could do this one thing and holy shit, 
even though they didn't expect it, they did. Alec, you did a muscle up the other day. Oh my god! Your yeah. whole world changed Ch- in a moment. It was ridiculous. In a moment, Alec, it was so weird. Like he was, he was at the gym. Uh, or at the CrossFit gym, and he was just kind of swinging around on the uh, just dicking around like yeah, just do. dicking around. I was doing um, muscle ups, Burpee so he was he was too. watching what I was doing, and then he kind of grabbed and he was swinging, and he was like following my lead a little bit, and he just went for one and right. landed up on top, and his eyes went holy oh, shit! Like I literally instantly, yelled, screamed. Right. Alec became a guy who couldn't do muscle ups. To a guy that could do muscle ups yeah, right. in a moment, even though he didn't think he could, and he could all along, it, but he grew right away. Yeah. And and the most valuable thing I've found so far to be able to, to do for clients is put them in situations where they could grow. You know, and it's not a guarantee. Like I've, it's yeah. kind of fifty fifty. But like I can put them in p- those positions often, and like if I put them in those positions often enough, and if they stay with me. They will have those moments of like instant growth, and yeah. they will progress their their software. They will progress their mental fortitude. To to branch off what you're saying, uh, you said something to me the other day. Uh, it was a critique on how I lift, especially in regards to the Olympic lifting. Is I don't. You said I don't ever get in the Dow. I never get in that um, that no that flow that a lot of people describe that, that no thinking spot and just doing it. You know, I oftentimes uh, embody John North way too much. I watch too many John North videos. But during that moment, during the muscle up, because I told myself I know I can't do this, I didn't care. I just knew that I'm going to give it 100% and I'm just going to go for it. It was just no thought. There really wasn't any thought during that process. That's why I lit up like a fucking Christmas tree the moment I got on top. So I, I just hear, oh my God. Like it was a very <laughs> weird like moment. like didn't know what to do. I didn't know. I was like, was I, so I guess funny. now I fucking did. <laughs> <laughs> With that being said, if you're a person trying something really difficult, I wouldn't. I don't. I don't. I would never recommend going telling yourself you can't do it. But what I would say is, don't tell yourself you can. Just do the best you physically can, and put no other thought into it. Just ensure that you're physically, if it's a physical task, at least if you're physically putting in 100 percent of everything that your body can do, and nothing else. It's such a no difficult other thought. thing for people it's to do. It's very man. fucking hard. It's. Because, like, people have already decided in their own heads. You know what I mean? Like, to be able to turn that off is is so hard. And, like, you have to be in the right spot. Like, you have to be on those rings in that moment. In Like, and you happen to, like, catch some magic, you know? like. But I think it's a learned trait. I think it's a learned trait that you put yourself in those situations over and over and over again. Yeah. And when you think you can't succeed and you do succeed, you start to realize that you're capable of more than you thought. Yeah. And as you were saying earlier, like you don't, you've kind of disregarded like sets and reps and that kind of stuff. Not it's not that I've I know, disregarded not, yeah. them. I just know that like the answer doesn't, well, it doesn't always lie in the, in Fixed that pattern. spot. Right. Like I, I do agree that once someone's software is upgraded, like meaning they have the will, they figured out, they know how this thing works. They know how to work hard. They know how the whole like growing process works and to embrace the suck and bust their ass and, and work in the training zone. Right. Then it's time for the biomechanical approach. The software is fixed. Let's work on like the body. See, and I would but say 99% of the people that I deal with, the software is fucked up. Right. Well, what I would say, if I could apply my principles to your philosophy, is that I use the what you're calling the biomechanical approach to upgrade their software. That's right. what I'm trying to do. So I'm very meticulous about sets and reps and weights and what they've done. And what that does is it gives me an opportunity to record what they're capable of in a workout and then revisit that workout and give them challenges that aren't out of their capabilities, that are in fact more than they did before, but just barely. Mm. So that when they step up to that weight or when they step up to that exercise, they couldn't, they literally couldn't do it a week ago. Right. But this week they can do it. And you, the only way you can do that is to be super meticulous about sets and reps and weights and exactly what they're capable of from the week before. And then I find that they accomplish that and they say, holy shit, I'm better than I was last week. I'm capable of something that I didn't think I was capable of before or even now. And so that I'm putting them in that situation that you talked about, but I'm putting them there in a very like sort of scientific calculated way. And then you do that again and you do that again and you do that again. 
And over time, they become you on the pull-up bar where you're like, I don't think I can do this. Holy shit, I can do this. You have those big epiphanies through a series of very small you, calculated epiphanies. Do you find epiphanies. that your clients... Does that make sense to you? Yes. Yeah. It did. It does. But do you find your clients always respond to what they can do in the gym as being a good thing? Like, okay, so one thing I have, I have a lot of trouble with is female clients that could give a fuck what is on the bar. They could care less how much weight is in their hand. Right. They could care less whether they finish this workout any faster. Not clients. all of them. Is, this, is, is it just your, the ones that you've come? No, there have been more... Generally, more female clients have this problem than male clients. Like in my own experience, less ego. This doesn't mean right? a generalization. No, no, yeah, no. The ego is a driving force. Less of an ego. Yeah. Yeah. Less of an ego. How much can I lift? How right. much can you exactly, bench? guys. I know how to like respond or like use guys' egos to help them out yep. because I have one. So, <laughs> right. um, but not, like, I apparently when girls do do not have the same sense of ego as we do, or like they don't get the same reward systems from uh, certain sort of challenges and um yeah that's fair so do you what do you find that you how do you deal with the client that isn't necessarily impressed with themselves and what their performance is they're more concerned with their their response physically you mean what they, they like? want to they want to see the abs they want to see yeah. like the fat like go down they want to see just a pure aesthetic and they just don't care how much harder I worked in the gym. I don't care how much more weight's on the bar. I care about uh, fitting into a size, you know, 32 jean or whatever. Right. Yeah, I would say, well, one, that's more challenging because the results are uh, slower, right? Yeah. But I also think that uh, showing, you know, showing them the results. What I try to tell people like that early on is to focus on how they feel after workouts that's one of the immediates that I think anyone can relate to. Because after you work out, I think we could all say that we feel pretty awesome. So when you hone in on that feeling, uh, you give people an immediate result after exercise. So initially, I really try to like push that as the reward system. But you need, I mean, I feel like I need at least eight weeks with a client to really have them get the compliments and have other people really start to notice their body. For those who are like really focused on the mirror, um, and so you got to get through those first like four to eight weeks to actually start seeing some dramatic changes. And then once they see those dramatic changes in the mirror, then they're sold. Then yeah. they're like life. They're like, well, whatever you say, I believe it because you very clearly shown me that you can change my body. But initially I try to get them to focus on the feelings. The biggest thing I like to tell clients with that mentality is that six weeks you see it, 12 weeks, everybody sees it. Yeah. You gotta commit though. If you're not committing, then you're not worth. You're not. It's not that you're not worth, but it's not worth your time, like to half-ass this. Yeah, I say, uh, what? Two weeks you feel it. Four weeks you see it. Eight weeks everyone else sees it. Mm. I'm not as good as you. It's no, weeks it's me. not that. It's, it's, just, I mean, it's a fucking not, saying. Thanks, Rob. You know I mean? Thanks, <laughs> like, Rob. It's just a, fucking asshole. It's a, <laughs> <laughs> God, you're you're right, just what so are you doing? Bad. Twelve? I doing eight, bro? Wow. <laughs> All right. God damn. At least my saying does. You just got out alpha. God damn. No, no. Dude. That was funny. Uh, I think that's a really good idea, though. I think, um, yeah, Rob, stay in the fucking frame. I'm sorry, guys. Stay in the goddamn. Right. I have to edit this later. Um, you. So I the the one thing that you said that I thought was fucking. I'm spot at Ben Dana Fitness, by the way. So come check me out. Twelve weeks. Oh, sorry, go ahead. You already bought it. Yep. Yeah. Did you really? <laughs> It's going to be a pretty penny to buy back. I'll tell you that. <laughs> um, so the, the, the this kind of goes like back to full circle from what we were talking about at the beginning of the podcast is uh, to embrace the suck, right? Like if n pay attention to how you feel after you've been working hard. Pay attention to how you feel after you've been expending these large amounts of energy all at once yeah. and like pushing yourself to a, a very dark, terrible feeling. See how you feel about the rest of your life after you like feel like you're on death's door and like life is hard and, and you know, like this this couldn't get any worse. You know how the, everything else feels after that moment? It's fucking awesome. Yeah. It's awesome. It's a it's a form of therapy and like no one can deny it. Yeah. No one can deny that. And if you can get people to actually pay attention to how they feel, how like how's your outlook? How like how are you interacting with your family, with your friends? How's your how do you what do you feel like first thing in the morning? What do you think about first thing in the morning? 
you almost always feel better after when you've been working out, when you've been working out hard. Like if you've really been pushing it one way or another, you've been like really seeing how difficult life can feel, then like somebody cutting you off in traffic like doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. Like somebody like taking your coffee at Starbucks is not a very big deal. Fucking assholes. Oh, I can get that for so 17 funny. bucks. Fuck 17, you. Bandana fitness. <laughs> oh, dude, for... don't do it. Wow. This is... <laughs> wow, dude, look fucked, at this. You're fucked, bro. You're so fucked. Oh, this it even so says, mean. snap it up before someone else does. Oh, bro. <laughs> Better Sorry get on that. Because guess what? The minute you I don't even up... want to fucking buy it because then people will go to Bandana Fitness and I don't want any. No, no, there's a thing. There's a thing. You buy it, redirect it to your website. Yeah. No, I know. I know. But still, then people, when they type in Bandana Fitness, they get redirected you, to my website right. as if hear... I'm condoning the fact. You have to, that, though. Did you fuck guys, that. Did you fuck guys everyone see? who thinks it's Bandana I'm Fitness. It. Fuck you. Wait, I don't even it? want you as followers. Rob, it's going to be fine. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did you guys hear what happened with Mayor Bloomberg? This mm. was on John Oliver's show. What did he do? So he started like a new a new website for himself, okay. and he bought up like eight hundred different website names, including like all the ones that said like Mayor Bloomberg sucks dicks. Like wow, Mayor. Mayor he bought up like everything. Right, that's commitment. So John Oliver like had put his team of writers on the case <gasps> to figure yes. out all of the website <laughs> yes. domains that they forgot. <laughs> They right. didn't get, I mean, the possibilities are endless. It's right? wonderful. Yeah. Dude, and then he announced it on the show so that oh, the that's... world could just <laughs> buy up like Mayor Bloomberg is a short little puny punt face. Like, <laughs> like, it, it was <laughs> oh, so brilliant. That, that guy's brilliant. just making enemies uh, left and right, so and I gross. love it. I think it's so, so fucking funny. Were you just asking, though, Kyle, what, what, what he does initially in his day? Is that what you're just asking? No, I was talking about, like, how a workout can really change your oh, entire yeah. life. And if Josh, you can get yeah. people, if you can get people to work hard and then Thank you, sir. fucking just pay attention to, like, how your day was. Work your ass off. Then, like, just pay attention. It's like yeah. whether you had a better day today than, great, I mean, it, totally, than yesterday. Right. If you can get people to just fixate on that, like, th it's an instant win because no one can deny it. Right. You and you get at least eight weeks out of that. And then at eight weeks, you're changing bodies. And then they're sold for life. Right. So it's like, that's step one, man. Like, any, it, try to redirect, redirect your client's focus into how they feel after a hard workout. Boys. And then you'll really, you'll get the momentum going. Yeah. You know? You've reached the end, gentlemen. That's a bottle. <sighs> God, I'm. This As is Kyle awesome. said earlier. Let's do it, bitches. He's going out after this. Yeah, yeah, he's going to that concert. <laughs> no, man. <laughs> Maybe. How long? What, what time is it? It's 10. Doesn't matter. Eight. Anyway. You know what? Anyway. How long? Have, has yeah. It's been a while. Feminism. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's funny. I'm studying I feminism, to, criminism right now. I wanted right to now. talk about it because we all you, you're studying have it? Yeah, women. Yeah, it's a big part of my, uh, we all have my women uh, in our associate's lives. degree right now. Feminist criticism. We all have a lot of women in our lives. And <laughs> yeah. uh, feminism, feminism is a big issue right now. And that's what you want to... Yeah? Yeah. No, I do. Because I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Do you want the definition? I, I give don't. It to you. I, I, Wait, what do you mean Alex? you don't get feminism? I mean, Meaning, I would almost say that I'm could, a feminist. Can you explain it to me? By definition, I am a feminist. Feminist. Yeah, I, I, okay, think, so I'm a, what is, I think I'm I, a feminist as well. What so is the, the definition? The definition is the advocacy of women's rights on the grounds of political, social, and economic equality to men. Okay, so this is what I don't get. Do you think men and women should be equal? Okay, this is what I don't get. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't even want to answer. <laughs> He's like, let's talk about what I don't get first. <laughs> good, good. Yeah. I have always kind of thought if you replaced women with everyone. <laughs> oh boy. You mean men? No. Re re -say, say that phrase again. The, advoca the advocacy of women's rights on the grounds of political, social, okay. and economic equality to men. The to men. Okay, so let's say the advocacy of human rights. To everyone, right? Women's just, rights. Just replace. Let's replace oh, women okay. with human. All right. I've always been of that belief. Right. And if anybody isn't, You're fuck you, man. Okay. <laughs> like, so to me, feminism is quite redundant. It is like no, a, that's not fair, Kyle. Because you, you, what you're saying is from your own perspective, people have always been equal. No, 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 no. no, no. What I'm not they saying they, they should, should be. be is right. What you're saying. 
and they're not. I mean, if you look at the history of the world, and what I'm saying is, I'm a that, it, that hasn't been the I'm case. A, I'm a humanist, so I guess so the question feminist is, feminist fits within humanist, right? But so, I guess the question is, do we have some ground to cover for women to catch up? Short answer: Yes, men? of course, and that's why it's ridiculous. Then, then, but it's true of everything say- that is in like unfair and unequal. You know, like anybody that doesn't get a fair shake should deserve the same amount of like cultural um, um, pressure to like balance that out. And this yeah, is, but and, that's and feminism this, for women. Agreed. And but this, like then it should also be like animism. Like right. we, we, it should be like uh, for veganism. For animation it should be for, is that, is for, is it no, for I meant like for the an, animaniacs. Like, animal, like they should be equal race. to the other human. Animal you race. need and you need to make these redundant terms and books and studies because if we don't, we won't get there. Just it's won't. not redundant. What do you mean redundant? It's not redundant. I believe like, everyone. No, I, I just you guys are both saying it's equal, redundant. Right? No, no, it's like there's it's, there's no other term for feminism. It's just feminism. No, no, humanism. I, it, redundant. You're saying we should all be equal. All humans. Yes. Humanism. Redundant in that, why the f- do we really have to limit down to gen- genders? Like, Are we, we that just, silly? And the answer is yes. Everything? And that's why we need <laughs> feminism. Shouldn't we cover the whole fucking we book? Should, but the but thing we is, don't. guys, that's why I mean, we need this. I think this, it actually brings up a good point. Like, do you uh, actively dedicate yourself to feminism? Yeah. That's what I mean. It seems like. Wait, you do? No. What I'm saying is, I actively <laughs> dedicate like, myself yes. to humanism. So yes, Which kind of. But that's such a big. Of. But uh, my thing is like, if you want to make a legitimate change, because when I look at the world, I think there's a lot of shit out there that you could uh, commit yourself to. Mm-hmm. Like you could commit yourself to poverty mm-hmm. or children's health or climate change or feminine. Like there's so many causes that ultimately I feel like you want to help as many as you can. But your humanist perspective is like, let's all just be equal. Are you, that to so, me is like, that's that's almost a cop-out because it's like, it's too to say, big to conquer. I wasn't try, trying to say, like, let's all be equal. I was saying, let it all be fair. You know, like, let's let's make the entire system not just, like, not just women, not just any race, not just any religion, not just any ability, not just any hairstyle. Fuck. What else? Like, what e- e- everything... Yeah. yeah, that everybody gets a fair shake in this, right? Like, let's not. Yeah, and that's. I mean, let's that's, not exclude that's op- anybody. That's optimal, but that's just not the case. Like you, you, you have to have a driving force for particular groups. Otherwise, their feel, voices you know just won't be like heard. It's the difference between a flashlight and a laser beam. Like with a laser beam, you're going to focus a lot more attention and energy into one particular place. But it's effective. Like laser beams can cut shit. Flashlights right. can't. Yeah. You yeah, know what I mean? agreed. That's and so fair. that your flashlight or your strobe light is like, let's just like spread it all out. Off. And I think that some people are saying so, like, no, this yeah, is the yeah, cause yeah. I want to like, dedicate myself to. It gets to. watered oh, down. Analogy. It gets watered down. I'm gonna steal it. And you like that? I like that. Yeah, yeah that makes a lot of sense. I, I like that whole cutting. That thing, like it's more important to, do, to like <laughs> shine a direct light on one particular aspect. Well, then, then really you can affect change, which is important. You can actually affect change, and that's meaningful. And that's why it's there. As much as I want to be like, yeah, fucking everyone should be equal. You need situations like where we need to focus on a particular right. thing. So I think we all should. I mean, I think yeah. individually, okay. like you, we should dedicate ourselves to some sort of cause and then educate ourselves okay, and so say like, I actually know something. Here's about some this. here's some shit that's come about oh, because of the here's feminist movement. Yeah. All right. One. Where did this come from, by the way? Why feminism? I've just been thinking about it a lot lately. It's okay. in the fucking news all the time, man. Like everybody's going to, you know. So, mad. all right. So, California just passed a law that, oh God, that yeah. uh, if in order to have sex and it definitely not be constituted rape, rape, you have to physically or you have to verbally say the words, do you want to have sex with me? And the woman has to respond, yes. Like and if consent. you do not say that, it could be oh. rape. It, Even husband to wife, uh, anybody you meet at a bar, like you have to verbally say it, or you could be held liable for rape, and that's part of this feminist movement. This is the thing though. that has been passed into law in California. Just like I will say this though, just like anything else, there's a dark side. There's a shitty side to everything, and I will say the true the hardcore, extremists. right? The, the extremists, extremists the, the dogmatic adventurers or whatever, they corrupt them. Right. They make it fucking insane. That being said, I would wager a bet. True feminists, man or woman, 
think that's law. That law in particular is outrageous. I don't think it's feminist. I think like sane people would say sane, there yeah. are that's actually, yeah, sexual encounters yeah. in which that is just not you know, on the table. Yeah, no. Yeah. Sometimes girl, it just gets weird. But well, it's so <laughs> it's such a terribly. <laughs> I mean, it does a, get weird. I, terribly, you know what I'm saying, though, dude? It does get weird, and it's yeah. awesome because, like, yes. what, like if you're it's if mystery. you're fucking, you took some girl home from the bar, and like you're going up the stairs, and it's like, oh god, I got my hand down her skirt, and like we're going upstairs. <laughs> you can tell like, he hasn't done this in a while. Know, I don't even know. I don't even know if we're gonna have sex or not or anything. Oh, but then, then she like grabs your dick and she just puts it in. And it's like, oh, 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 oh my god. I'm having sex. I'm wow. Having sex. Is this in the stairwell still? And and it's in the stairwell. It is. It is. And, it's in the and you just can't believe it. Skirt. And guess what? You just that even California, you just broke the law. Like yeah. that's terrible. That you're gonna take that away. You're gonna take that moment away from all humanity in California. It's fucked up, California. <laughs> it's really mean, man. There can be some really good. I mean, like change people's lives moments, or at least remember that forever. You know. Ugh. Um, so that's fucked. So, is it, feminism. There used what to is, be. What do you have to do? What do we got to do? Don't be an asshole. Just like what anything is, else. Is that all it means? Yes. Yes. Don't be an asshole. <sighs> and then also fight for rights and stuff. Really? And vote for things that are much better. All right. Let me, let me give you another weirdo thing. Let's do it. That I saw. Like a feminist Do you know group. back in the day there used to be exemptions for husbands? Like husbands couldn't legally rape their wives Oof. no matter what happened. I think it was called. Oh yeah. It was impossible. Yeah, according it, yeah. to law, like right. a, a, a male could, and that's what I'm talking about. When you look at the history of oh, women's fucked. rights, yeah, it's clearly. ridiculous. Like, it's, it's bad. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Right. You know, that, that, like, that, still, that you understand why dude, feminism is a thing. And then you go to yeah. fucking Syria, and and it's still you want to see yeah, like yeah. people stoning women to death because they want to drive or because they want to go to school. You're thinking of Saudi Arabia, but yes, is it Saudi Arabia? Saudi Arabia. It's fucked up, man. It's fucked up. Yeah, um, but it's a lot better here in the U.S. <laughs> like, than it is in Saudi Arabia. Be- Shouldn't we be like focusing our feminist no. attention to Saudi Arabia? No, not yet. Shouldn't it be like feminist Saudi Arabia? That is a totally different. Well, they talk about fra- <laughs> You're like, studying this shouldn't now, we right? Be like, they talk about, shouldn't so they this talk be about like the waves of feminism, right? Yeah. Like yeah. the first wave, second wave, third. So we're in like the third wave right Just now. About so. it's. Right now we're dealing with it's you're like there's a lot of extremism in feminism. Guys, and that's I'm gonna some, go pee. Do that. And that's something that I find I'm gonna a, miss lot, you, a lot of people in particular. Am I just not good enough? No, no, no. Talk I'm to? Just, no, that's what you said though. I also study psychological saying. criticism and that's just what you did. <laughs> My insecurities. No. A lot of, I feel like a lot of people who I find are like really hardcore feminist uh, feminists, especially in, in like say class or whatever where I'm studying. They don't want to admit that we're at a turning point now where we need, to, I feel like we need to pump the brakes on the extreme end sure. of things. Right. Because that in, in and of itself is bad for feminism. Right. That's shitty for the cause. Yeah. That is it's just plain hindrance. It's, it means as simple as that. And I think that's the biggest problem with feminism now. I mean, although, I mean, I would like to think that things are getting better for women, but statistically, it's not quite even yet. I don't right. know how long it'll be. Yeah, I think extremism can spoil any cause. Mm. So the extremists always make the cause, they they taint the cause and make it feel fucked. No bueno. Uh, and it's no different for feminism. You know, that being said, there's a there's this really big story that happened not too long, like a year or two ago. Not even maybe in, in California again. Um, there was a student. California. There's always shit happening there. Crazy shit going on. Mm-hmm. Crazy <laughs> uh, same friend. Um, yeah, there was a student, two students. Uh, I think they were both like 21. They were drinking. They were texting each other like, "All right, let's, let's have sex." Basically, what their text basically said. The girl asked, "Do you have a condom?" Guy said, "Yes." She came over. They had sex. Well, so there's literally like written proof that they both had agreed. So long as there was a condom, we could have sex. What had happened uh, later on? I guess the week, the day, it doesn't matter. The girl had regretted the fact that she had sex with this guy while drunk, while both parties, both people, participants in this case were drunk. She regretted that and she went to a, another teacher, uh, call her college professor, and her college professor said, because this particular gentleman is of a class of uh, higher income and uh, physical ability in that he was on the football team, he's more prone to raping people. So that being said, he probably raped you and you should press charges. This guy was then expelled from his school, lost his grants and all this, that, and the other, and just removed from the entire program from this very good school 
Um, and she wasn't. All because she has the power to say, I just didn't like the fact that I did that later that day. And that, I think, is an example of extreme, the extremism of how it could go wrong. Because you can change your mind, it's right? Make the it girl can change her mind. Post-sex yeah. regret, Danger. essentially, yeah. is what... And that's bad for just, I feel like, women. Like, that's... Because you regretted something doesn't mean you didn't... Like, it doesn't mean this young man raped you simply because right. of his social standing uh, economically it's or... It's not a good idea to give people the power to change their mind. That's... Because they can, like... <laughs> Then they can totally reconstruct, like their this the way that they stand on well, certain the, things. Well, the, something that they did in the past. Well, None the of thing us have is, the ability to do that. He was it's removed. Unfair. He wasn't removed from <laughs> fair. It's basically like God. being able to like yeah. time travel. Well, the thing is, he was removed from school simply because someone didn't feel very good. Oof. And nice. you know, we that that fucking happens. You're an adult. Yeah. Was there a, a a case around this? And yeah, I mean, he's a kid's trying, kid's trying to go to court. It's, it's actually in, the school it's can, now. It's, it's currently in court. Yeah, it's, yeah. Um, the school kicked him kicked him out. Yeah, he's removed from the college. He's done. I yeah. mean, that's tough too. Because and he also like, has a record now. Guilty, isn't that how it's yeah, supposed to work? Yeah, but schools can do whatever they want. Like it's not the law. They're just kicking right. him out of school. You know the the law. But that's not to, innocent but until not, proven guilty. No, like, that's not to the letter of the. But an institution has no no requirement to. Give have an in, innocent you know until have to Google the case right? proven guilty. Yeah, no, I know, but know it just mean? it feels uh, yeah, it's it feels unfair up. based it on it's what I know. Definitely about. unfair. But dude, I think everybody should be equal, right? Like what, anybody that doesn't believe that, or butthole. <laughs> yeah, I mean, are there people out there who are like, you know what, butthole? <laughs> you know what, butthole. <laughs> Are they like that? I'm sure there's people like that. Occidental oh. college. Occidental. Occidental. I just pronounced that way wrong. <laughs> a- angels at Occidental. Occidental. Angels envy. Thanks, Angel. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, due to discrimination, the student was kicked out of school. What do you think sex. are the biggest issues, though? With feminism? Like, what, yeah, like what is the worst thing about being a woman? That's Dude, like, there's a lot. So <laughs> number, what's, like, Did you see that video that went viral? What do you viral? think is the number yes. one thing? About walking? Don't like that video. Yeah. I haven't seen it. I have actually. a lot of problems I mean, with that video. Really? Uh, yes. Yeah, I wanted to bring a, that up too. Wait, is there? I, I actually, of, I just saw the headline um, and the- It's tomfoolery clip. with that video. A whole, yeah. lot of, whole lot of good editing really? to- One, I, watched, I read a really good article on this particular- One, they used, they, they, they added the perception that they went all throughout New York City. In actuality, they chose like three blocks in particular and just kept going back and forth on that one block. Right. The neighborhoods they chose were economically disenfranchised. So what do you get with economically disenfranchised neighborhoods? Shitheads. You get people just sitting on the and belligerents. You get people yeah. sitting on the sidewalk who have nothing else to do because they're poor. We all know belligerent people will say and do anything right. because like for no us. reason, right. like us exactly. right now, <laughs> right now, which is why we are recording all right. this. Yes. And, for and, the internet and, forever. And forever. Three, for our very, great, 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 great kids. Great, great. You're welcome. <laughs> Suck it, kids. This, this, <laughs> and very choice editing with that yeah, video. Yeah. They chose a lot of parts. It just, it inadvertently became racist. It also became yeah. uh, classist. Yeah. And at the same time, there now there was you know. Do you know she did experience really bad jail? Pull up, pull up. This uh, video. What's it? What's uh, it called? New York, like go, feminist girl walking, girl ten walking hours walking down Brooklyn yeah, no, and getting harassed. Or Manhattan hours. actually. She did, did experience. You, now, did you guys see? I think it was College Humor that did a yes. guy walking. Yes, I did. Did yes, you did. see that as it was well? Really bad. It was, really was it funny. funny? It was funny. It was funny. And they, there was also See, a video. See, I've only seen the headlines. I try not to click on this shit because it's a fucking time suck. And this is the thing. They also did a video of a gay man walking in the same area to shit on that video. Oh, yeah. Just as harassed. This is it. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah, he was... In fact, funny. I would almost wager worse. because This is the power threat. of the internet. Anytime you post something, like, it, it goes under scrutiny and it goes under, like, observation. Yeah, because it anybody, should. Anybody can, can show yeah. why or how this could be bullshit. Just like science. So only the it good shit. It must be scrutinized. Oh, that's awesome. And now this is the thing. I love the internet. She did experience real bullshit sexism and dudes hollering at her, like, like a guy following her yeah. for, like, a while, like five uncool. minutes. It's very creepy. Uncool. And that's something that, yes, as a society we should uh yeah work on but when you're choosing the worst of neighborhoods to get a certain result and you're only picking certain demographics you become a shithead and you're ruining the fucking cause you're trying to fight against because this is a very good cause this is a good cause now you're shitting all so, over it th- right. and what she does is- say nyc in literally in the title in nyc as a woman yeah no when it's like so she's trying to 
embody all of NYC. Yes, which is not the case. They br- they literally oh. the people uh, Google Maps her walk well, and, and found every block. It was like three or four. Blocks. Apparently, I've only heard the second. Well, research this shit. But I did. I was apparently, upset. in certain like countries in South America, if you do not hoot and holler at a at a girl that's walking by, like she will feel terrible. Colombia. Herself. Like it's a different. Serious? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a different cultural. Evidence, but it's a I have friends from Colombia and girls. Just it's like, a different yeah, culture there. Like so that. much so. If like if wow. you don't go, yo mommy, yo, wah, wah, that's whatever, what they say. Like the girl will be very hurt and like uh, like very upset. See, that's crazy, that it, right? Like, it's like culturally, it's a different it's... culture because it's a different place. So if you yeah. go to those areas in New York, yeah, everybody's gonna fucking hoot and holler because it's fucking polite. It's like just it's. <laughs> it's I'm it's doing you a and, favor, and it's right? Reaching your also, hand out, it's like, and, like I am clapping like, for saying, your ass. Yeah, okay, I'm like I'm applauding it, and, right? not for, and not for nothing. The majority of the comments that she received were, "You're beautiful." Yeah. How is your day? What the fuck? You look great. <laughs> That's a majority like, of the comments, yeah, right. yeah, and then there's play, play of course the there's the one creep who should be you know like what the f- like pulled aside and like and g checked like dude what's sure. wrong with you? There's like, always one you? creep in the mix, of you know what I mean? But it's like it's in, just in this case it's me, but no big deal. It's all right. <laughs> it's we can't drop this into our video unfortunately because YouTube will pull us down. Really? Yes. Why? They'll pull us down. Really? Yes. But right, so at the same I'm time, gonna, try. I mean, to get on the I'm radar. I'm just going to do a uh, play by play. Do it. Yeah, do the play by play. Woman's walking by, predominantly Latin or black. It looks like Latin neighborhood. Everybody's saying, What's up, beautiful? What's up, girl? How you doing? Somebody is acknowledging you for being beautiful. You should say thank you more. For real? God bless you, mommy. Now that's a shithead thing to do again. Hey, but. baby. That guy was holding an alcoholic beverage. Hey, beautiful. How are you this morning? People are just being nice, man. It, I. Now that's not like, nice. That's you know, not nice. maybe, but maybe in that guy's country, she's in Times Square. This is the thing. This is more. I feel like this is much more of an economic issue. If you go to a poor neighborhood, you're gonna get I not think, as. I think you're right. It's, I think it's a, a culture thing. C- could also, if you were to rewind, let's rewind 120 years ago, New York City. You yeah. know the people would be shouting at this girl: Italians and Jews. Mm. Why? Because they were the poorest at the time. Or Irish, probably. Now, this is really you know creepy. I mean? This guy's just walking with Five her. minutes. That was five minutes? Yeah, that guy was a creep. Yeah. Hey, look at there. I just saw $1,000. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that was funny. I just saw $1,000. Does that mean what I think it means? Because that uh, would have been really bad. Yeah, probably. This is the thing. I get right. it. As a woman, we, we can turn it off. You, we put you. You done with that? I get it. As a woman, taste. you shouldn't be subjected to just the physicality of yourself, and that's just your worth. Like some guy saying you're sexy, so we should. It, it all alludes to sex, essentially, right? But well, is there anything wrong with guys hitting on girls? I mean, I think inherently this video is saying topic. like that's the question. There different is topic, something, yeah. or rather, it's how it's done, right? Is like, there a right are way? Are you allowed to hit on girls? Are you not, not allowed nothing? to hit on girls? This has worked for some guys. Doing what those dudes have done, like, hey, Obviously, oh, hola, mommy, like, yeah, right. what's up? That's sure. worked. I know for a fact it's worked. I've seen it happen. So I mean, I've a- gone up to and talked to girls before who are completely strangers, mm. and we all flirted with them. Like, who hasn't? Right. As we a guy. Have. Every single one Maybe of them. Like, it's like, is yeah, a chance. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Fucking went for it. And it's fucking worked. Maybe it'll yeah. work. Maybe, so is that a cr- like, is these, that a bad all thing? The, all these- or is it in the, like, it's in the idiosyncrasies of how you do it? That becomes the problem. And it becomes convoluted when you have intercultural uh, people doing it in the way that they do it. Sure. And right? you have and an, back home, it's normal. And you have an agenda of yeah. showing a and, certain and, aspect of it that seems super creepy. Yeah. Like and very good editing at that. Six million views on YouTube. Oh, fuck me. There's, there's, a lot, there's a lot of tomfoolery in this video. I just don't I mean, appreciate it. It's just upsetting. It's there's bad layers for here. There's layers. I don't think it's a crime to hit on a girl, and I would say that there are some feminists who might disagree with me. I think they would say it was a crime, yeah. Yeah, they're like, yeah, li- they quite say- literally, like, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, I don't want you to fucking, fucking talk to me. And that, jail. And that's the and thing. Case, it's One, like, you wouldn't ugh. talk to them anyway. Two, it's dogmatic. That's when someone did an extreme. Don't right. talk to women. Dude, we're getting to that Strangers point. Strangers, you don't. We're getting to that point. They're they're putting the shit in the law. They're saying you have to, like, get consent. You have to get this person to say, do you want to have sex with me? And the other person say yes or no. 
So it's becoming, it's getting there. It's getting so fucking crazy. That's that, a like, leap. That's in, a leap. In, in five, five, you're going from like hitting though. on a girl to like having sex with a girl. What happens like in big... five years when it's illegal to hit, a... yeah, hit on a girl? <laughs> what if it's sexual you, assault? Come on, dude. Are you you're, going, now you're being the extremist. You're going, you're going doom and now gloom right now. you're being the same shit that we're talking about. Could you got be, uh, jail. You want sexual jail. Get in here. No, jail, this is great. Out. You got to get in on this, jail, man. Come out. on, man. Get in on this. Come on. Look, I want to say this. You're like, this is important. Do you remember Demolition Man? What is it? Demolition Man? Yeah. Do you remember, Del- do you remember Del- Demolition Man? No. All right. Demolition Man, when they when uh, they were having sex, it was through virtual reality. Okay. And I yeah. think that's where it's going. Yeah. Virtual oh, reality. yeah. So. 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 All right. Jail's bringing a new. This is New way to right? look at this. Yeah, right? <laughs> what, where, where he's saying, I think, where I hope he's, what I hope he's saying <laughs> is, <laughs> is that we will, we will be, become so nerfed to the world. We will become so fucking extreme sensitive to everyone. We will have zero interaction with each other at all. And the only way that we'll be able to have uh, like a sexual experience or any sort of like that experience is by putting on a virtual headset with each other and having completely virtual technological sex, right? Like the, there will be no foreplay yeah. and there will be no risk and there will be no sort of need for hitting on anyone. There will be no need for uh, hurting anybody else's feelings or even the risk of potentially ever hurting anybody's feelings. And you will just have zero risk, like secular, technological sex no with each way. other. No way is that true. Jail, expand. I disagree with everything no, that you no, just but said. I, but no, what I'm understand. saying is like, is it going there? Oh, well, that's the okay. direction. Is it, it, I'm like, not saying it's there now. I'm the, just I saying think, like, would it get there? First no. of all, with the extremists and the feminism, like it takes an extreme mind to actually change people. So I don't mind the extremists. The idea there. behind like direct. Yeah, the behind, it, behind an extreme person. You yeah. know, like it takes that kind of mind frame. But if it continues to progress that way, like uh, obviously what happens in that video is really the, it's not, that one person says something cool, it's uh, the constant, the constant, you know, right. like you go four blocks. I can tune everybody out, but I can't imagine if somebody's actually talking to me for four blocks, for five minutes, for 10 minutes, every time I go outside, yeah, I'm like, that would wow. suck. I, yeah. That would suck. That sure. would really, that would really suck. And I think that's, that's what, you know, they're trying to get at. Right. You know, you going to us going up to what a the, woman. They're and, saying this is an unnecessary thing I have to deal with just because I was born a woman. And in, inescapable also. Inescapable. Like they can't, right. they yeah. can't avoid it so that it's like, that's tough. I just, I have a hard time feeling bad. Oh, man. I do. For women. For the cause or for the women? For the women. For women. Just in girl. general. Like, I'm, I'm saying, like, if the tables were turned. It sounds pretty awesome. Like I, 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 what I'm saying is like, if the tables are turned and I'm a guy and I have to deal with chicks telling me how hot I am all right, day, but that's the thing. You're viewing no, you're from, viewing it from your own guys, perspective. You're I viewing am. It from you're viewing a man's it. perception. You got to get outside of your perspective. Outside of this, like I can you enjoy consciously being tell pers- me that like that sounds that terrible. All right, <laughs> like, all right. Wait, 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 wait. Just wait a second. Wait a second. I understand wait, what wait, you're wait. saying. Like, can Go you ahead. really say like if I had to guess? Like, God, that sucks, man. I can't like. <laughs> okay, what I'm gonna wait. <laughs> to be told I'm beautiful it doesn't sound that time, bad, but it's man. yeah. I think it's more than just beautiful. But right? this, this like, is like, oh yeah, I'm gonna fuck that. Yeah, thank shit. you. Oof. What this stems from, like originally, I feel like I could be totally wrong, right. but I feel like this originally stems from sex, and not only sex. You know, ten thousand years ago, there was no dude. Sex, old, sex but, runs everything. Right, right, but right, it does. But what I'm saying is. You know, 10,000 years ago, there was no hola, mommy, how are you doing today? There was, I'm going to grab you by the hair and oh, fuck yeah. you. I'm going to throw you in the ground. And that's the fear. That's how caveman did it. Right. That's the fear as a woman when you have creeps still, and harassing you. That, is what you're saying. that men have, no matter what, I know we have society and cops and stuff and the other, we still have the physical capability to just about do whatever the fuck we want. Yes. We just choose not to because we're educated. That's still an underlying fear for some people, and that's really unfortunate. Yeah. And that's something that I feel like that's what the cause of the, as much as I don't like this video, I feel like that's what they were trying to get to. It's, it's almost that Marxist perception of power. At the end of the day, the more dominant part of our species is male on a physical spectrum. 
And that's really fearful if you're in a neighborhood of shitheads. That reminds me of the Oscar Wilde quote. Are you familiar with it? Which one? No, but... Okay. Everything in the world is about sex except sex. Sex yeah. is about power. I, I had okay, this, so it's very I, Marxist. That's a fucking good quote. That's a very that good, is quote. good quote. Solver dropping bam! bombs. Dropping <laughs> bombs. Watch out, bam! <laughs> whoa, whoa. Got a little excited there. Ooh, it's the angel's the sex envy. power quote. It is. It's so Thank true. Thank you, Oscar Wilde. That's, that's what it is. It's, it runs it's everything. power. I, I, was in, I had this epiphany the other day when I, I was right at uh, CVS. And I saw the <laughs> As we all have epiphanies. Getting our The home of epiphanies. Getting our CVS. Listen, I was at CVS. I was picking up for prescription. I got some bubble gum. And, and then I was like, the fucking world. And I looked over at the sex section of CVS. Oh, I was with you for this. Yes. You were there, Alec. And, you know, it's a little tiny sliver in the corner over by the pharmacy. Like, maybe it's illegal. Maybe you have to pull a shelf open to, to, to get in there. And and I kept thinking, like, this is a little tiny bit of, like, this 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 pharmacy this place is like supposed to have everything for anything health related and then i thought about like how big a deal sex was to everything mm -hmm. and it's everything like if you actually think about it the whole reason we do anything is for sex to get the best is that fair sex. I mean, it I, is I fair this in the it's past. absolutely like, is it all fair like sex? think about it like you you anybody that wants fame anybody that wants power anybody that wants the control to be admired to be loved to to make a statement in the world to to be anything different to shout out and say like hey i matter hey i'm a thing hey like dear god anybody validate that i exist that all comes from like this desire to like get sex like well, it's resources get, i used to think that yeah. and now i don't think that anymore. what do you what do you feel what do you Go really expand think on it this is? i don't think sex is the center of the universe i actually think i want that's like a Rob, procreation Joe. Uh, centric perspective. Okay. It's like we're on this earth I to want, procreate. This is, this is one of those topics that I really want you to change my mind right now. <laughs> I, like, I, like, this is one of, I swear to God, like it's one of those topics. I I'm mean, totally this gets open. into some really big I'm shit. Open, I'm open to change my mind. We are this on a is podcast. a huge big shit. But I want huge you, big shit topic I want you right to here. Sell me on this massive shit topic. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I feel like you know I haven't done the due diligence to think about it and I think you could like help me change my mind but I want to hear your side I think this is all based on the concept that we're like on this earth as creatures that ultimately have evolved to procreate and that procreation is sort of the center of our primal being and that's that's our driving force of like so the if DNA, that's your viewpoint like our DNA. then I would agree okay. that sex is uh, paramount sex is the it most matters important. more than anything yeah, yeah. Because okay. we have sex, we pass uh, on your genes, offspring, and we keep fucking evolution, blah, 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 right? Okay. Um, I, I just I, don't think that I adhere to that perspective. Okay. I don't think that is my, the universe that I live in. Okay. And yours. And you have to expand why? on that. Like, why? Does, like, why? You just said why you don't believe in it. Yeah, I know, no, you right? goof. No, yeah. you, have to, you have to. What the well, fuck? One thing I will say about myself no, that I have to. What, what, what do you want then? Okay. Right? I know, like, unless you're a Buddha and trying to reach nirvana and surpass uh the the chainage and the linked nature well, of i would of say that a spiritual aspect is okay. a spiritual aspect is a uh, a counterpoint to th this viewpoint mm -hmm. so that yeah, if you believe you have you have Buddhas. You have uh, even the the popes, the Catholic priests, the monks, the uh, the abstainees that say like this is uh, this is fake. This is DNA. This is an illusion. This isn't real. This isn't what you really are. You don't have to give in to that nature. This is just like a stupid illusion. Is that thing. where you're leading to? Right. It's like that. Like so, those guys ha may have it figured out. Is what you're saying, or like maybe some combination of the two. Yeah, I mean, what if that, like, I love this idea of duality where, like, both could exist at the same time. That's mm -hmm. very interesting to me. But, yeah, I would say that, like, what if, uh, what if we're, uh, the universe, like, us being dropped on this universe isn't the center? Like, what if the universe doesn't go on without us? What if it's a... We are creating it from yeah, our from, viewpoint. Right, what we the what bio, we would say, bio, like biocentrism. A, yeah, or experiential, or um, our own consciousness, mm -hmm. right? So that our consciousness is actually at the center, 
and that everything in this universe is actually a part of my conscience. Mm -hmm. And, and that, the that includes look, the vastest parts of the universe, all within my, my experience, my conscience. Cool. That, to me, makes a lot of sense. Right? Does it not? It For seems you? to me more and more, the older I get, the more that life seems like it's fucking with me. <laughs> like, the more it seems it's fucking like... fucking with you? Yeah. That, like, life has been designed. Like, that life has... Uh, it's a little bit too convenient. It's a little bit too weird that we are re living right now, like right before the tipping point, like right before like hu like apes and fucking technology exist hand in hand. Like one hand we're apes and another hand we're gods. I don't know. I think we're everyone like, feels we're, that we're way. Everyone that, like, throughout ourselves. time has always felt that yeah, way. Like but we're we are at the tipping we are point because we just discovered fire. I think right, like no one had fire man. before, and that's changed all. Like we're at the tipping point because we just discovered bronze, and now we can take over the. Like everyone throughout history has felt that way. The thing is that we're discovering fire every other day. I think we're having discoveries as what profound mean? and or equally profound as the most significant what? moments of all time. So, like, what, what I'm saying is, like, with it took humans about about. 600,000 years to like develop uh, clothing and like paintings and it took humans then another like 50,000 years to develop language and then it took the humans about 20,000 years to develop you're describing more uh, fire right. Right. And you're making like, up numbers right you make, you're describing <laughs> that but you're also describing Moore's law like tech Exponentially, yeah. The well, what I'm saying is, like, there's an advent. Like, right. it's, I the, get that. Fire so then it's like, was fire was a big invention, but it was the only invention that happened for about a million years. And then agriculture was a big invention, but it was about the only invention that happened for about ten thousand years. And then industry was a big invention, but it was the only. So what are the like about thousands of inventions that we've had in the past? Okay, so we landed a probe on a comet. That was cool. 69. Wait, yeah. Is that, is that a... Is yeah. that, a, is we, that a right we, we, that Hey, right get this. We was shot it. 69? For what? The moon? Yeah. Yes. Went to the moon Dude. in 19... Oh, on a comet? We was shot it in yeah. 2008. Yeah. 2008. That was just recently, right? Yeah. We shot it in 2008. And it flung around the fucking galaxy because our math was right. And it landed on a comet in 2014. Using other planets' gravity as a propulsion to then land when on you, the comet when, 11 right, years listen, later Rob, in the right spot. Rob. That's pretty awesome. If I put you... Fuck yeah. America. Humanity. America. Oh, Rob. Science, bro. Let's say... That's some physicist I leave you awesomeness. The, I leave you in the woods with a hatchet and, <laughs> and I would infinity. Definitely How long would it take for you to land a probe on a comet? Ten minutes. Tops. <laughs> Maybe eight and a half if I had some coffee before. Rob, what I'm saying, it's <laughs> it's speeding up, dude. <laughs> like it's, okay, it's, I mean, I'm down for that. Like it's, a technology... It's like yeah, a funnel. I, you, you ever drop a, a coin into one of those big funnels and it spins and takes a long time around the edges? Like... And then, like, as it gets down to the funnel, it's spinning around like crazy every other second. You can't even see where the coin is. Yeah, but I guess my counterpoint to that is, like, we might feel like it's really speeding up and we're halfway down the funnel. It's really good point. Like, like, it's going way faster than it was up top, but, like, we got a long way to go before this shit starts happening at the bottom. Yeah. You know what I mean? What do you, so I, where, where, well, I guess I would say is, that I feel as like ego or like I guess humanic is, centric to say like we're close to the end of the universe. The question is, where does it get weird? Where shit, uh, my, at, life, at my life was point, weird last Friday, dude, bro. You that's should, a thing. Oh, shit, no. <laughs> I think my my life. That's the thing. Like when I look at my life, I look at this time. I'm like, this is too weird, because like if I oh, had to look at the entire human what race, that? what were we talking about before? If I looked at all of history Feminism. and I, uh, I wanted to decide where do I want to live my life, fuck, man, I, I'd pick now by far. Like, this seems awesome. Of all the times. Would you really want to live in any other time? This is the thing, though. I mean, look, 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 careful. That'll get you. <laughs> oh, bro. You got amped. You jumped out I like me. that. I was like motherfucking ninja over here. Go. I like the um, energy you got going. Fucking riding a dinosaur? I mean, you wouldn't choose to ride a dinosaur? No, that shit that would be really awesome. dangerous, man. Like I, bl dying a bloody death by a dinosaur. 
No, or like maybe you, bro. Being a knight, that. bro. You can do that with an Oculus Rift and a headset, okay. and it's awesome. Here we go. We, you can do that with the internet and a video game. Yeah, everything is some this is the thing though, Kyle, marijuana. As me and J- <laughs> no, as, marijuana can do anything. As me and JL could attest, there's only up until a certain point that gentlemen of our color could go back in time to where we're comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because what? That's what funny because it's true. Once about, we go past the this? 70s, yeah, yeah, shit right? gets real. Dude, <laughs> you, got like, you got we like don't get five s- decades, <laughs> and that's it. All right? With my beard and skin, I'm fucked. I'm just... Unless you go back like two million years, and then it's like, you guys, you guys are good. Maybe. But then there's dinosaurs. Right. And that's a different and beast. It's, and it's a whole other animal. <laughs> literally. Yay, racism. Right. Um, Dude, how about this? True, false. In 1912, there was still a black... No, 1904. In 1904, there was still an African in the Bronx Zoo. That's true, actually. There yeah. was a, 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 an a human? African Yes, human. an African human being in the, no. in, in, the in, in a cage zoo. in the zoo. That's real. 1904? Yeah, 1904. that's real. That is so fucked it's actually, up. It's actually released as a family. In 1904. Really they brought them over from Africa and just put them in the cage. Ota Benga was, lived in the Bronx Zoo. Wow. Behind bars. I did not know that. In There's photos. You can check it out. There's fucking so, photos. Here's the thing, man. You don't, well, think, we were it's, about you don't think it's speeding up? Like, look around. <laughs> like, look around. It, it's, I'm not saying it's not speeding up. We're I'm living saying in magic. We're living in magic right now. Like I'm, I'm no, magically. I think I'm not even disagreeing with no, 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 you. Everyone. I think we live in magic as no, no, no. well. I but I'm saying like right. it's not. I think that I could have felt like we lived in magic at any point in I, time. I totally agree with Rob in that in that way. Like I think the human existence is magic. How about, how about this whether guy? it was a thousand years ago or a hundred years ago or now or a thousand years in yeah. the future? I think it's magic. I totally agree. It's all magic. Okay. It, we just happen to have cooler magic because it's our magic. But the uh, thing is, if you were in China in fucking, I don't know, 1100, whatever, yeah. and someone invented gunpowder, you'd be like, oh my God. Yeah. We like, just made cannons. We can blow shit up From with fucking this. a mile away. How That's awesome. just as cool Whoa. as the internet That's is awesome. to us. It's like a nuclear bomb. Right. I can't even make gunpowder. And they made our, it back then. Our perception. No way I, can I, can make make gunpowder. I have no idea no how gunpowder is. No. Our perce- it's, it, what it, I think what Rob's argument boils down to is it's a matter of perception. You know, 200 years from now, people are like, can you believe those fuckheads using MacBook? Stationary computers. It wasn't in their brain. (laughs) They still stayed on Earth. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's going to be a totally different thing. You're right. And then we're cavemen. You're right. It's a matter of perception, I think. We're so stupid. (laughs) We're so fucking smart. We're so stupid at the same time. We said that earlier, too. This is all coming full circle. It is. is Because this podcast is amazing so far. One big circle. God, 18 is the number. (laughs) Why is 18 good at whiskey? Like apparently, and age eighteen years. Yeah, yeah right? Yeah. Eighteen is uh, Johnny Walker too. Yeah, yeah. Eighteen's a special number. I'm not even gonna pretend like I know. It's like it's <laughs> legal. like the original generation. It's Used legal like legality that. and sex. Sex. Uh, great whiskey, which I think goes hand in hand. But you can all that stuff. go to war. Let's put you a could cap go on. to war at eighteen, but you can't drink. Let's put a cap on the feminism thing. In so America. what can we do? Except for back in the day, right? True. Is, what's the best thing to do for feminism? To just let you it know, grow. Let it. Let it grow. Oh, regulate itself. What do you mean? Oh, let it so, oh, regulate itself. What can I do? I oh, mean, you? Yeah. I mean, oh, I think shit. we all have a responsibility to live our lives uh, as humanists, as saying, like, we should all be equal. Mm-hmm. And that, I think, is a, like a daily choice. We have yeah. to choose to respect and uh, be aware of our own sort of prejudices and sexisms. Uh, you, to prevent them, you treat it you know like a I mean? like a white blood cell would treat cancer. Any, I feel like you know, anytime if you're outside, like anytime now I'm in school and some someone says some crooked shit about any particular topic, I think you almost have a duty, just as a citizen of non shitheadery, to be like you're you're an asshole right now. <laughs> just like just point it out. Just like, dude, what are you doing? Yeah. That's silly. I think that's a small example, but that's kind of our job, just as a human being. Now, sometimes I do that, and you I do. feel like I am being such. An asshole, right? But like, cause I do it a lot. Mm. Maybe, yeah, yeah. You I, notice it a lot. Are you an asshole yeah. sometimes? Yeah. yeah, like I know I'm doing it while I'm doing it, and I'm like, I'm just, I'm just picking on somebody, like because of a dogmatic view or something that they haven't thought about. Like, I'll be, I'll spot it across the room, 
so quickly and easily. And and, yeah, and I can see that like someone's viewpoints are so shallow on a certain topic that if I push and actually like push some data on them, like they don't know what the fuck they're talking about at all. And I'll exploit <laughs> it and make them look like assholes. Well, and one thing that you do, it. you also tend to, and this is, this harks back to the introduction when you were like, why aren't you, why aren't you be coming on this podcast? I feel like sometimes you choose a opposite viewpoint as someone and just argue with them. He's a contrarian. Yeah. Hard. You are. Like, you like okay. to Dude, argue with people. I graduated law school. Man. Exactly. Yeah. You're like, a lawyer. I, you I, like I to get argue. off but on that's my winning point. no matter what side. I hate that. I fucking hate that because it's not about arguing. Yeah, it's fucked up, man. It's not about arguing. No. It's actually about let's have a conversation for a greater good. Right. Because well, sometimes you yeah. don't pick the perspective of, like, this is what I believe. You pick the perspective of, this is not what you believe. No, and I'll just, and so I'll I'm gonna choose it. I'm gonna fuck you in the face with it. Cause I know how to like fuck in the to, face. I know how to I know how to direct. direct. I know how to direct. You're a great it. arguer, but it's an but it's uh it's a, fucking a flaw because like it, it comes out <laughs> and, and like I feel this part of me that's like shut up you asshole what is you feel me? that yeah you know it's in there yes thank like, you there's there's <laughs> that's like, my thing it's like that's I, in there for like, you when that part of me comes that out like something you like, want to i've like, seen it happen in real time and i'm like what are you doing yeah because there's this other part of me that's like this cooler much more zoomed out and like chilled out like version of me right that's like you are an asshole <laughs> like what are you doing like right. why are you making well, this it's person like you're feel not bad? arguing to uh, to prove your point you're arguing to destroy their point it's to hurt them yeah it's like it's how can i just purely, how ego. can i get under your skin no it's and like, like just it's just almost, take your point no, and it's shatter worse. It. it's like it's, it's like worse. I'm gonna, it's worse, it's worse, it's worse because it's like i'm gonna hurt you <laughs> Like it, it's She's like I'm gonna hurt you, here. like For without sure. without um we all physically hurting sometimes. you. It's it's yeah. it's much more of like a, an what is extension. That about, like why it's much What's more of it's much about? more of a personal pain that you're projecting on why other people. Why though? Why would you do that? I'm I'm sorry. We all do, Rob. <laughs> like, Come on, we all do this, Rob. I'm sorry. In some way or Rob, form. What maybe no, not. No, this, no, maybe I not. Do in, not agree. Maybe not in Kyle's. Maybe not in Kyle's particular form. In this particular case, arguing with someone, but we all have insecurities. Hurt. People no, no, not necessarily like, to, to me, hurt them to for me, no other. It's, no, no, no. I'm talking about feeding just the ego a safe, side of yourself. It's a safe way to just like eject my own pain, and it's terrible. Like it's awful, and it happens, and that. it happens a lot. Look, I don't do it on purpose. I really don't. Right, but but it, how does that eject your own? To, to me, that's causing, that's creating pain. Well, the pain that's creating originally like, was just in me. Like for me, it was some sort of turmoil that like I am dealing with or like maybe something I'm regretful. Maybe I see something in somebody else that I used to be. Maybe I see some like no, dogmatic view of something I used to feel and it makes me so mad to see it that they and have that, that. That, that I want to hear it so bad and I want them to immediately go through the process of like changing my view on something that I went through yeah. that I'm projecting that that pain that I had like 10 years ago on a certain topic that like I hadn't thought through and I'm going to like, I'm going to throw you through it. I'm going to drag you through the mud and make you realize what I realized. And, and it's unnecessary. And I know it's stupid, but like there's this fucked up part of my personality <laughs> that uh, like wants to like drill sergeant people yeah. like from time to time. Like when I see something, it's just like automatically, Maybe I can like undo the pain that I had to go through by like projecting it. But I guess my point is, I think you can help people uh, have that epiphany without sending them in a direction that you don't believe in. Definitely. Without sending them in that's a direction what the that's like part of me is always telling myself. Like, right, that's like you I'm can like, argue yeah. a point that actually makes sense as opposed to a point that is just clearly the opposite of what they think in order to. Uh, argue with them. And that's when I become black belt. Like that. Like that's the problem. Like I, right ninja, now, yes, that, I'm yeah. not ninja. Like I'm, I'm, I'm using certain skills like inappropriately, and I'm like because you're so good at it. My own. You're so good at it. Like yeah, you're, it's like. A, it's but like, you just have to direct it like in a slightly I'm, more positive to, way. <laughs> yeah, I'm not like pushing it like all the way to the right direction. Like I'm still like teasing the waters of like fucking with people 
behind. And me. it's frustrating because I've seen it happen, and I'm like, that's that shit is frustrating. I don't yeah, like it's kind of mean, that. right? Like, because I know I what like I'm being doing. Around it, yeah. Did you? I did today. Don't oh names names, dude. <laughs> I did it. Yeah, I know, did. but names. <laughs> names are bad. I'm sorry. No, oh, we're not. editing that. <laughs> no. Why? I can apologize. All right. right? Sure. All right. I'm not going to say a last name. Yeah. Fair There's enough. literally like eight people listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> we don't have to edit it because no one yeah. is watching. <laughs> no, but like no, it was I a sure. dick move. Like, and you yeah. know, like, and it's not just her. Like, I've done it to a lot of people over, over the last like, how long? Have, it's been like, Five years since done it to I graduated me. law school. Definitely done it to you. Yeah. yeah. And like, I'm, I forgive you, by the way. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> anybody I've ever done it to. Um, and I'm trying it to happened cut today. It out. It's funny that it, it happened, happened today. today yeah. No, we're, we're it really talking like, about pissed me off. Before, like, yeah. it's really, it's weird. Like, it, it definitely, uh, like, where I never would have noticed it ever. Like, now, like, it really affects me for days like after i do it and i'm like that was fucked up like, well isn't that isn't that a part that. of to go full circle yeah. so, so you start all, figuring out lessons well, yeah, to go all the way back to what we were talking about before putting yourself in uncomfortable situations in mm-hmm. this particular case you admitting well, on your just, on your self, favorite it's self-examination ex, you know conduit of art podcast that you're yeah, yeah, i'm a dick sometimes <laughs> totally <laughs> to work on it yeah, I'm a human. Super man. uncomfortable. I'm not like I don't have this figured out at all. No, I'm no, terrified true. all the time. It's <laughs> <laughs> like, true. I, uh, I mean, I, I, uh, there's not often a minute that goes by where I'm like, holy shit, holy shit. <laughs> like, I'm on earth. <laughs> what's going on? Yeah, no, I feel you. Um, yeah. I think about that all the fucking time. So like, I'm constantly figuring out like where I'm fucking up, and I'm trying to like figure that out or direct it to a way that like would like improve me or make me better and that's why i like love all the people that i met on this podcast and like all the people the we have on because it's the only opportunity i ever have to get somebody else's viewpoint as to how they're dealing with this like common thing that we all have to deal with which is like, that life fuck i'm a non-infinite being trying to figure out like what I'm supposed to do, you know? And that's hard to like think about and it's hard to deal with. But like the best thing that we have is like talking to other people and figuring out how they're dealing with it. I agree. You know, and we don't do enough of that. Totally. God, guys, I think that's the end of the podcast. podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Well, well, on on a, on a final note, if I may, um, some, there's some notes I wrote during the show. One, uh, to, to, to really branch off and to delve into what we're talking about and that bettering yourself and fighting that resistance and getting better, I recommend to everybody a book by Stephen Pressfield, uh, The Art of War. Oh, is it The War? Yeah, The Art of War. And, um, and, and Rob's site, actually, Bandana Trading. Not because he's just our friend and we love him very much. But I remember uh, when I was first starting to uh, go about the process of being a personal trainer like two years ago or so, I was constantly on your website, and one video in particular, a split squat video, really helped break down how I instruct things. Not in that particular movement, but these things in general, because you're really good. You have a very good ability in uh, really simplifying things down. Uh, and in this particular, in this particular case, it has to be about fitness, but just about anything in general. So I recommend Rob's website and uh, that book. So Sweet. get it done. Thank you. And I'm so glad he came on the show because like, I always have the best conversations with Rob ever. And yeah, like, really never do. get recorded. Now we got it recorded. And <laughs> sometimes we'll sit in the goddamn trainer room and like talk for like hours as like oh, we have other guy. shit to do it's on. Bless. And uh, he's one of my favorite people to talk to. I'm so really glad. Are. Like, I, we finally like got this got on it. record. Totally. And Love you. Uh, it's official forever for your grandkids yeah, and exactly. your, your grandkids. Your great grandkids. And yeah. All of the great grandkids. Awesome, man. So thank you again. And bandana training, everybody. Bandana training. Get your Until ass on next website. time. Learn some shit. Meathead on mushrooms. Please subscribe. We have 22 followers <laughs> next <laughs> week. I would really like it to be 23. Yeah. <laughs> so we love if you. Everybody made it to the end. Please subscribe or make up a fake profile and subscribe. Yeah. Either would be awesome. <laughs> Namaste, <All right>. cocksuckers. <laughs>